Medicare Patrol. To report Medicare fraud, call the Senior Medicare Patrol at 800-699-9043. Progressive presents the Sports Flash on News Talk Radio 1410 WRMN. The NFL draft is on the horizon. The Bears have the top overall pick. GM Ryan Pohl said that USC's Caleb Williams will be the selection to make room they traded Justin Fields to the Steelers, where he'll reportedly have a chance to compete for the number one spot. Pohl said on Monday, Probably one of the harder things I had to do. I was kind of touching the empathy part. You know, like having that conversation with my own son was hard. Uh, his jersey's up in his room. You know, puts that into uh, perspective of how difficult those uh, moves are. Um, he was positive. His tone was good. You know, I think what was important for Fus and I is to really express to him, although this is a really tough decision, like how much he means to the city of Chicago, our fan base. NBA last night, the Wizards beat the Bulls 107-105. to DeMar DeRozan led Chicago with 27 points. Bundle auto and home, renters or condo, and save with Progressive. I'm Chuck Sanders on News Talk Radio 1410 WRMN. Taco Bell just dropped the new Cravings value menu. Now you can get 10 items for $3 or less, which means you can get the food you want for the price you want. It's almost like you can have your cake and eat it too. But in this case, it's a double stack taco from the new Cravings value menu. So basically, you can have your double stack taco and eat it too, which is a lot crunchier than cake. The new Cravings value menu is here. Get it at Taco Bell today. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Contact store for price and participation, which vary. Tax extra. And now Martha Stewart for Skechers. When I make a dish or embark on a craft project, I always use the finest, most fabulous ingredients and materials. Which is why, when it comes to footwear, I love Skechers. Because Skechers is the comfort technology company and uses the most luxurious, innovative materials and designs to make wondrously comfortable footwear with all the fits and features like Arch Fit and Skechers' world-famous air-cooled memory foam. It's exactly the way I... In the middle of the night, everything will be all right. If you listen to Coast to Coast, right here on WRMN, seven days a week from midnight to 5 a.m. Each night on Coast to Coast, listeners are captivated by George Newry with discussions on news and current events, conspiracy theories, UFOs, life after death, and all things curious and unexplained. Whether you're working third shift or you're just a night owl, catch the most listened to overnight talk radio program in North America, Coast to Coast, every night, midnight to 5 a.m., right here on WRMN AM 1410 and 967 FM. In the middle of the night, everything will be all right. If you listen to Coast to Coast, right here on WRMN, seven days a week, from midnight to 5 a.m. Each night on Coast to Coast, listeners are captivated by George Newry with discussions on news and current events, conspiracy theories, UFOs, life after death, and all things curious and unexplained. Whether you're working third shift or you're just a night owl, catch the most listened to overnight talk radio program in North America, Coast to Coast, every night, midnight to 5 a.m., right here on WRMN, a.m. 1410 and 96.7 FM. Welcome to WRMN 1410. This is the first shift. My name is Dennis Sonar Green. I am filling in for Marky B. Today, also helping me today, is the amazing uh, Larry Jones. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thanks for reading that, just like I wrote it down for you. <laughs> That's it. We, we have to have a little bit uh, of a different style in the morning than uh, I usually do in the afternoons. Oh, yeah. You kind of have to. It's got to be kind of a, you have to ramp up. <laughs> you don't want to hit the ground running, I don't think. You, you, can't just, you can't just come right in with just, hey. Hey everybody, how are you doing? Let's go. Let's no. get everything. <laughs> yeah, Mark even he you know he has like mood lighting. He kind of <laughs> he I think he wakes up at his own pace once he gets here as well. That's true. Well, it's we, good to be in though. It's good to be yeah, in. It is. Yeah. It is. Um I I'm always glad to be here in the studio. I'm always glad to be uh having a great conversation with you as well. We didn't have to we didn't get to have one yet over the air, which I'm looking forward to today. Sure. No, that should be fun. Although we've had a chance to chat, mm -hmm. and that's been good. Yeah, absolutely. No, and um, and just hearing you on the air as well, and in um, hearing how you articulate uh, your ideas, um, both in a intellectual manner, but also to joke around yeah. too. Which is, I mean, if you can't play with words, then then what are we really doing? No, here? I agree with you. And and you know, there are some things we talk about that you just you you. 
if you would make a joke out of it, you would be the world's biggest <laughs> jerk. You know <laughs> what I mean? True. But that's there are true. many things that come floating by that that kind of look like something that's easy to take a shot at. So there, there's too many philosophers that have just said you have to be silly. That's like, right. Like no. everybody from right. from Voltaire to um, to Kant to uh, Nietzsche, like they all just like if you can't laugh at yourself, if you can't laugh at what's going on, well, in that's the absurdity true. of life. I agree. I agree with that. And and sometimes it gets embarrassing when you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, in June it'll be ten years that I've been here. Ten years. And I've in the beginning I would be like, oh, I'm sorry. Now it's like, oh, okay, well, thanks. <laughs> you know, and, okay, I was I was wrong. I, I should have a disclaimer that in the beginning of the show, a lot of this stuff might not be true. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. If you if you heard it on on the radio, it must be true. Yeah, so that's, maybe that's not. Thing. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And we're gonna have Dean with us. Absolutely, Dean's okay. on his way right now. Okay. He's, um, I don't he's think gonna we're gonna him. have to let him go. Do you? No, I don't I, think. So. I don't think so. No. <laughs> the way the way Dean and I keep putting it is uh, is voting off the island is like we don't we don't have, we, we don't have to worry about that no it's not going to happen <laughs> exactly uh, but it is it is fun to uh to bring all the different voices here for wrmn so what i want to do just to stick with tradition stick with with uh, as what people are accustomed to don't forget you can always call into the studio studio 14 847 nine three one one four one zero if you want to jump into the conversation I, I i say that too fast sometimes my radio voice kicks in so uh -huh. so studio 14 is eight four seven nine three one one four one zero after a while that just flows all together is eight four seven nine three one one four one zero i know <laughs> I, I know hey and we had talked about this yeah. the other day that if you call well i, I would really like to find out how you if you watch us, if you watch us on on uh, on YouTube, if you listen on the app, or if you still have your AM radio set at fourteen ten, I just like to know how you're doing it, and and maybe there's a better way to do it, mm -hmm. and maybe you're thinking it might be better, but I don't want to take it on, but you're really good at this. You could help people who oh who absolutely are, people who are sitting back and they're thinking, I, you know, I'm I'm not ready for change, mm -hmm. even if it would give me a better signal or or a clearer signal or something less frustrating and so uh i just like to know that as well oh but, yeah okay well, i like to i like to also uh listen on the am dial as well when i'm in range mm -hmm. i like to listen to it too because there's something about that warmness mm -hmm. of an am signal of of just that that mid-range frequency that's in there maybe a light hiss in the background that's kind of calming for it as well and then if you throw in calming voices and, and intelligent voices and humorous voices into it as well yeah um uh it, it kind of just adds that little bit of nostalgia don't you think it's a bit like vinyl making a comeback the very same yeah not that crystal clear it's a little bit more it, it, there is a little noise in the back and and mm. i always think about uh music i like listening to 60s 50s 60s music mm -hmm. uh, mono yeah. Because I grew up, and I think people my age grew up hearing it come through one speaker in your car. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't grow up hearing hearing uh, like a lead guitar over on the left and hearing a bass coming from the right. They all came. Mm -hmm. From the very and it's somehow very it, it's pleasing to me to hear music that way. Yeah, it wasn't really until I, if I remember, it wasn't really until. Um, FM took off. That's right. That was there. And even then in the 80s, um, AM radio was trying to be stereo, but they couldn't, uh, I guess they couldn't um, uniform it. Right. Was the biggest issue. Was no, was, was, it was around Reagan era, Could have I been. remember. Yeah. Um, and they essentially said that, well, if there's no way to just uniform everything, let's just keep it the way it is. Because right. nobody could come up with a uniform uh stereo receiver for am and and honestly if you go into the stereo aspect of am um you have trouble making those fox uh the foxhole um uh radios oh okay you, you remember in, in the early war war um i think it's world war one when am radio and everything was starting to get there you could actually make a am radio out of like a lead pencil oh really and like a and crystal like a coil. Set. yeah but, yes right yeah mm -hmm. and they call those uh the foxhole radio oh i, I see i uh, never heard it referred to that but yeah yeah my first thing was uh, the first thing that i think i wanted a transistor radio which okay. was a big deal but i my first christmas that i 
went on about it, I got a crystal set, and it worked if I would ground it on like a steam pipe or something. Okay, like that. Yeah. And it probably, uh, I would imagine that I could get WRMN. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a lot of channels, and it had a kind of a little slide tuner, so you'd be playing around trying to get it, and then you lose it, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, but, and that's a side, too, is is that I've kind of seen with the digital era, right. is everybody's got that dial right on the money. Exactly. But back in the day, it was like 1410, right, is, is where we're at. But back in the day, it was really hard to just nail everything right on oh, yeah. the money. I agree. So maybe you had to be actually at 14.9 or 14.8, and you always had that that's Sweet right. spot that you were was kind of, you were always you were always tweaking you were always tweaking it and and in those days of course pre pre uh, uh, transistor radios in cars yeah they they took you would start your car and everything would have to warm up it wouldn't be instant not instant gotcha. sound there would be like I don't know. now it, thinking back it seems like it was like thirty seconds it probably mm-hmm. wasn't that long but it did take a certain amount of time for you to start getting noise. where the bulbs had to actually yes, warm up at had, that point yeah. And wow. I, yeah, so it was uh, it was interesting. Music and technology, of course, just keeps getting it goes faster. And when mm-hmm. technology breeds technology, right? Yeah. So it even becomes more. It even becomes quicker coming to us. But uh, you know, I always have a warm spot for radio because that's what I grew up with. Radio was big deal, big Absolutely. deal. You know, uh, really big. Uh, whether it was WLS, WCFL, mm-hmm. they were so popular that there was an uh, officer Vic, he was the traffic, he was Chicago police officer, mm-hmm. but he was the traffic guy on WLS. He was making personal opinion, appearances. <laughs> <laughs> That's how popular radio was. That's fun. <laughs> yes. That's fun. And you're right. The technology's there, but there's a lot of technology that like, like we, we leave where it is like, like no one, no one's invented a new sponge technology in a while or or the wheel is obviously a, um, a simple simple machine at that point. And I think people going back and forth to everything. Let's do a couple <laughs> shout-outs real quick. Sure. Uh, Sultan of uh, South Elgin. Uh, A.K.A. So, South Elgin Chris. Oh, South Elgin Chris. Yeah, Thank now, you. See, he, that's what it is. He, he changed. Mark, maybe Chris did it. Maybe uh-huh. he reinvented himself. I, <laughs> that's only a few weeks old, as a matter of fact. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm glad you're here to, to help me translate. Uh, good, he says, good morning, Larry and Sonar. Good morning to to you, sir. Hey, uh, Brendan comes in as well. Good morning, Larry and Sonar. Hey, Obviously, Brendan. two people that are listening and watching on YouTube, regulars. the YouTube side. Yeah, of they're it. regulars. That's awesome. Well, mm-hmm. thank you guys for being here. Thank right. you for uh, for doing it. So, let, before we go to our first break, let's just do a little housekeeping. Sounds good. So, if you want to, um, let's stick in tradition. We want to at least make sure if we can't if we can't keep track of the um, of the text line or or the the honkers log or anything like that, let's at least start with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance Sounds and good the to national me. anthem. So. So if you're driving, please do not stand up for this. I can't hear it. Are you ready? Yep. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. National anthem coming up right now.
Okay. I think we're ready to play ball now. Okay. That's it. I mean, it's it's something simple. It's a simple gesture, but you know, it reminds us of where we are and what we do and why we do it. I mean, it we 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 get into this this loop where people are a national this and a a, a there. It's almost to the point where you can't be too patriotic without being labeled as a radical. I know. And and it's different with I, I think the issue is 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 it's when you use the patriotism to exclude somebody, mm-hmm. I think is where the real cutoff is. Now, let's be prideful of our, our country, let's be prideful of what we've got here, but not to the extent of like I'm more American than that group of people. Right. And that group of people over there, they can't possibly be American. You're right. So it's it's um it's to remind us that we're all there. Um we're all in this together. I find I don't have patience with extreme anything now. Fair enough. Extreme right, extreme mm-hmm. left, extreme anything. Mm-hmm. Extremely thin. I don't trust. Jim- <laughs> I don't trust those people at That's all. True. You know. So. It's true. There's a uh, there's a Mark Lowry um, uh, just comedy stand up where he says. Um, if, if I, I don't like to discriminate against, but when I'm, I'm in a new town and I need to find where's the good place to eat, right. I find the biggest guy I can possibly That's right. find. He knows. Because <laughs> I'm not going to go to some little skinny dude and yeah. say, hey, where's a good place yeah. to eat? He might just be eating grass <laughs> clippings in his yard. Exactly. We don't know. <laughs> uh, it's there. Uh, let's see here. We've got John checking in. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, what a nice surprise. Absolutely. Um, Sultan says, cousin Frank Sinatra yes. was the Sultan of Swing. Right. So I am the Sultan of South Elgin. I, I remember they there explained that one day. And okay. I didn't. Now I remember it took Chris saying it, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh-huh. Was it, wasn't that. Who else was the, the Sultan? Wasn't that the Tom Petty? Or who, who did the, um, the Sultans of oh, Swing? Oh, no, no. Be, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll think about Dire Straits. Dire Straits. Yes. There you go. See, yeah. those, they were the Sultans of Swing. They were. Uh, but they were way. They were after Sinatra. <laughs> they were after Sinatra. That's very true. Hey, we're going to hit a quick break. When we come back, we want to know where are you listening? What, uh, what connection do you have with WRMN? Um, are you listening on the AM dial? Are you listening on the web? WRMN1410.com. Where are you? Where can we reach you? And how can we reach you better? Um, call into the studio, Studio 14, 847 931 1410. We will continue first shift right here with Sonar and Larry. less on Route 19, but that's not all. Parts, service, and body shop, they all cost less at McGrath Nissan. Used cars too. The reason why is how hard we try. Right now, get 0% APR financing on select new Nissan models at McGrath Nissan because Nissan's cost less on Route 19. Come to Elgin. See what we need. For a little lighthearted lawlessness on Sunday afternoons, listen to Handle on the Law from 4 to 7 p.m. Handle on the Law is a unique combination of useful legal advice and outrageous handle remarks. Whether you're talking about Big Brother, Big Business, Big Legal Problems, or Big Macs, you'll rarely find Bill without an opinion. His rapid-fire commentary gives listeners the information they crave in the way they crave it. It's Handle on the Law, Sunday afternoons from 4 to 7 p.m. Right here on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM. Batteries plus bulbs is more than batteries and bulbs. It's your repair shop for Apple devices, Samsung Galaxy devices, and more. Located on Randall Road, just south of the 20 in Elgin, Batteries Plus Bulbs fills all your battery and light bulb needs in one stop. They have the largest selection of batteries for ATVs, cameras, phones, laptops, scooters, cars and homes, and everything else. Looking to save money with energy-efficient LED or holiday lighting? Stop in at Batteries Plus Bulbs in Elgin. Go to BatteriesPlus.com for special offers. 
Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. No matter the time of the day, WRMN 1410 AM is your platform to voice your views, share your stories, and connect with the Valley like never before. We're more than just radio. We're a community conversation that's always live, always local, and always looking for your input. Want to chime in on the drive time deal with Matt McNeil? Got a hot tip for first shift with Marky B? Or maybe you've got a question for a one-on-one with Leah. Now's the time to make your voice heard by calling Studio 14 at 847-931-1410. That's 847-931-1410. You can join in the dialogue from wherever you are by commenting on our YouTube live streams at WRMN Radio. Hit the subscribe button to get notified when we go live and bring your comments to the table. It's easy, it's fun, and hey, it's what neighbors do. We talk, we listen, we engage. You're not just the audience, you're part of the show. Call in, comment, and let's make radio interactive. WRMN 1410 AM, where your words are part of our wavelength. A recent Gallup poll indicated that 38% of Americans are putting off health care because of financial concerns, the highest ever recorded. I'm Dr. Bob Martin, here to serve you every Sunday afternoon from 1 to 4. Millions of Americans are seeking health advice that will not cost an arm and a leg, so I offer health tips and advice absolutely free. Listen to my show, Sunday afternoons from 1 to 4, right here on WRMN, AM 1410 and 96.7 FM, the voice of the valley and the home of radio shopping show. From morning coffee to your evening commute, WRMN 1410 AM is here for you. The faithful friend that brings you local news, timely topics, and the friendliest voices in the Valley. Stay informed, entertained, and engaged with our full lineup of shows. Streaming all day, every day at WRMN1410.com or on the WRMN app. Wherever you are, we're right there with you. So why switch stations? Stick with the one that has it all. WRMN 1410 AM, your daily companion, your constant conversation. America's Best Restaurants travels the country and features restaurants that you should visit each week. Recently, the cast and crew made their way to Renata's German Restaurant in Hanover Park. Renata serves old family recipes and delicious German-influenced food. Renata's also specializes in a wide variety of traditional German baked goods, too. So, if you've yet to visit Renata's, try America's Best Restaurants choice. Drop in soon for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Visit RenatasGermanRestaurant.com. to WRMN 1410, the voice of the valley, the talk of the town, the home of radio shopping. Oh my goodness, Larry, I gotta watch out where I hit these buttons. Some of them just keep flying off this thing. Yeah. They've got some spring to them. (laughs) Thank you for being here, Larry Jones. Oh, thanks for having me in. Uh, appreciate you. you. You don't usually uh, come into the show on, on Tuesdays, right? No, You're Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Friday. Wednesday, Friday. Friday. That's because Mark uses Tuesday, Thursday for his, he's got like certain things he puts in, you know, okay. that, that works out. And uh, yeah, and actually three days, uh, that's pretty good. That's good for me. That's good enough. Yeah. And especially you coming over here this is the other thing too, because <laughs> I mean, we can, we can always reach you on the phone, but I mean, it's where's not, the fun in that? It is not fun. I, you know, when I'm in Florida and I do it remotely, mm-hmm. it really, not that I don't enjoy hearing from people, but it becomes a job then. It really is it, because you can't really relax. You're not mm-hmm. sure it's always going to come off right anyway. And, uh, uh, and, and it's hard. I mean, I can look over you and know when you want to talk to me. Yeah. When I'm called in, I can't see that because of the delay. Mm-hmm. There's just enough delay that I think I can talk, but you're really talking. And so it's so much nicer in here. It, it is just so much nicer. And and being down downtown Elgin and looking out and seeing people and all that, and it just adds to it all. Oh yeah, it's it's nice and nice and busy seeing everybody's faces as right. as you as you go as well. Exactly. And it's it's one of those weird things that yes, we do have video phones or video what have you, but but you're right, it's still that disconnection. Oh, it is of it. Um, and just to throw a little math to it, the human hearing um, only recognizes things that are longer than 100 milliseconds. Okay. So a tenth of a second essentially is, is what it is. So like, you look at it this way, in a, in a room where we're all clapping, right? Right. And we're all clapping at the exact same time. Mathematically impossible, impossible for all of us to be clapping at the exact same time, every single time for it. But as long as we're all within a tenth of a second of each other, 
it to us we perceive it that way oh really so um so when you're on the phone or you're on something and there's already that built in tenth of a second just because i mean communication and how it how it travels um that throws off that cadence that rhythm I mean, not to mention whatever other physical cues right. somebody has right and i, I never i especially on friday when jake's is in as well mm-hmm. I, I always Pretty soon, I start getting really nervous that I'm stepping on people. And Marcus said to me, he said, pretty soon, it it's almost gets like we're interviewing me. <laughs> like, they'll ask me, what do you think about this, Larry? And I'm like, well, you know, instead of being able to just jump in. It's so, true. And then us broadcasters, we just like to ramble and ramble and ramble. That's all right. You got time to fill. <laughs> exactly. You have time you got to fill. That's what I keep telling everybody. They're like, uh, well, because well, um, my punishment, if you don't listen to what I say the first time, is you have to listen to me again there you go and it's longer right and so i'm gonna make you remember it. <laughs> hey i want to tell you and i'll publicly announce it you uh, got me a new headset yeah this is this kicks man this yeah. is excellent you sound fantastic and, and the other thing i like about it you know i i got it for florida because mm. i like it in florida uh here are two things it allows me to actually move my 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 ipad right in front of me where i can kind of look at it instead of being trying but the other mm. the other microphones to me were so directional yeah. That that if I would if I see something out there I want to look at I would when I would listen it when I would listen to the show later I could mm-hmm. tell I could hear me fade out as I yeah so, so this is great thanks oh no I you're absolutely it. fine you're, uh, yeah. and and the thing is is if if you can't fix it with um, and I guess it is with this with life too if you can't fix it with how you operate try right. to fix it with with the technology no, that these are and that's they're available. excellent everything everything I hope it sounds good to people because mm-hmm. it sounds good to me no you you sound fantastic right. I've right. got headphones on too and it, it sounds great the right. and and that's the part of it too that I I, I hate to keep bringing up my students but uh, mic technique is a big big issue for oh, a yeah. lot of people because you know you you got those people that just want to do the karaoke thing mm-hmm. where they just eat the mic they're right just, just making out with it the entire time mm-hmm. and you don't want to do that no and you also don't want to be like you said you don't want to be off mic right so that when i turn my head now i'm over here and nobody can hear you're here right. in my cheek it's hard in here i know it's mm-hmm. hard when we've had guests in and that they, they maybe it's their first time I, I always think that first timers, when they're for an interview, they mm-hmm. they they get away. Oh they, yeah, they get away. If as they get more comfortable, they they start leaning into it. But they mm-hmm. and then pretty soon you realize that they're not they're really not uh, being heard that well. Mm-hmm. So. A lot of it is is hearing your own voice. I know that takes a lot of getting used to of hearing your voice in real time. Right, and, like we all hear our voice or whatever, but we we hear it through our faces vibrating. <laughs> right. So it sounds a little bit different. But when you hear it feed back into your ears, so what it what ends up happening, and I'll and I'll tell you is is you you turn it up a little bit, right? They can't hear themselves. So they're like, okay, you turn them up. Yes. And then they start talking and then they hear themselves a little bit more so they get quieter. Yes. So then you turn them up a little bit more so that yeah. you can hear them talking. You're really chasing them. <laughs> You're just chasing them through the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. It's there. What well, what was your first radio experience? Like um like you say you've been doing WRMN for 10 years or so. Actually, were you doing anything before no, you came no, over? No. I my first radio experience was going to the old WEPS the Elgin Public School okay. station over at the, what I call Old Elgin High. Mm -hmm. downtown just as an elementary school student i did the tryout for wps when i was going into lark and i didn't pass i didn't make it and i would like to think it was because i was just hitting that time in puberty (laughs) where i would go you're listening to (laughs) wps i don't know maybe they just didn't like me and i think maybe at that time it was a little bit more not that I can't be serious. Like I said before, there are a lot of things we talk about that I take very seriously. Yeah. But I don't think life as on an entirety has to be a serious thing. No. And I, not that I goofed around during the interview, but maybe they didn't think I took it seriously. Mm-hmm. I, it worked out fine. It worked out. I had a lot of friends that did get to go there. I was always envious of them. Okay. You know, but really, as I, uh, I when I was became the chief of police, in mm-hmm. South Elgin, I was invited to WRMN for interviews. When I was the village administrator, I was invited to WRMN for interviews. And then, as soon as I, uh, as soon as I retired, uh, we used to come up to a show that it was a broker show at the time called Left, Right, and You. Mm-hmm. And and of course, the, as the thing says, it's like they had. Uh, Nobody was so extreme at that that you would have to listen a long time to decide who was left and right, and and uh, 
So I was invited to guests on that. And then one of them was leaving. One had left and Jeff Ward came there. Mm-hmm. And then the other one was going to leave and they and then they had me up for one or two just to see how it was. And then they invited me to do that show. And then it was a, that was a one hour, one hour a week show. And then pretty soon it was two days a week. And then pretty soon we had three days a week. There you and, go. And then Jeff left and Mark invited me to come do this with him. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I mean, not that I didn't enjoy talking only and we really only talk politics and, and local government, which was mm-hmm. kind of I was interested in that. But this is a lot more fun uh, yeah. because we didn't really enter, we did not include listeners. We, we never okay. included listeners upstairs. And uh, uh, the most we would do was if we if we had someone, especially a public official, that maybe they didn't agree with something one of the two of us had said or both Mm -hmm. they we would invite them up but we never we never listened we never had a chance to involve the listeners Mm -hmm. and i mean i'm not always good at masking it sometimes i i i have i like to speed things up Mm -hmm. so i'm usually the guy who when i realize somebody's covered what they really want to cover and now we're just kind of like we're we're just kind of floating around flipping our feet in the water uh-huh. that i'm usually looking at mark thinking we let's <laughs> let's get let's to, go let's get to the next but thing. but i still enjoy him i still uh-huh. do and and being down here with him has opened the door for me to meet some of the nicest kindest people in the world oh yeah the first shifters mm-hmm. are by their nature just really kind nice people absolutely mm-hmm. from what i've seen and what i what i've uh uh just experience right. for uh for the station and everything else as as we go on um and and you're you're right i was i was never cool enough to even get a job at like a record store or anything mm-hmm. like that either or like like the um the radio or anything like that i always loved the radio i was grounded a lot as a kid oh yeah so i wasn't allowed to watch there the tv go. or anything yeah. like that so radio and and me were 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 there and you talked about how um, the interaction aspect of it, and interaction with radio has absolutely changed now. And even interaction with media in general, we're all our own media generators uh, already. So what, if you even use social media, you're an influencer of some sort. Mm-hmm. We're all chasing the likes or however else it, it goes from there. But the interaction has changed because I think it's because we've all become these these keyboard warriors where I can say whatever I want to. Like I it used to be I can say whatever I want to on the phone and you can't find me. Yeah, right. Then caller ID showed up. Yeah. So, uh, star sixty nine. There were the good somebody. times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, hey Larry, you suck. <laughs> Click. Yeah, thank like, you. Just, <laughs> that's yeah. what I mean. Like, yep. like you can no longer just, just no. bull your way into no. it. Now I can make an anonymous account somewhere, say whatever I want to, delete the account mm-hmm. and I and I got I got my message out there. Good, done. I'm I'm fine. Right. But um, but I think it works the other way, too, where communities have also been able to communicate a lot better Mm -hmm. with the way that that radio and everything else has gone. Radio communication now is 24 hours. Right. It's not just, hey, this is when I heard you. I need to call in right now. We call it appointment broadcasting. Be here at this time. And mm-hmm. this is this is the way you you have to do it. Right. The eleven o'clock news happens at eleven o'clock. Not not twelve. The eleven o'clock news doesn't happen at ten. Doesn't happen at twelve. It happens at eleven. So that appointment broadcasting, you need to call in. You need to interact with it with that live, either a live chat or anything else. But the on demand side of it where it is good morning where it is just that push a button and now it it plays no matter what time right time you've got the comments are where you interact right or the other social media hey i just watched your video and you post that on twitter i just watched this video or or as it goes (laughs) so so the the i guess what i'm trying to say is the interaction has changed but the the messaging hasn't necessarily changed. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. still want to contribute to a conversation. People still want to know more about a subject, and people still want to say, "Hey, you suck!" Hey. Like it's, it's a lot of that. Yeah, that's true. I, I, and you know, along down that same road, so mm-hmm. to speak, I uh, uh, we were going to talk about social media anyway. Yeah. But 
One of the things I really like now about using YouTube, the platform for mm-hmm. that, is the fact that you can go there whenever you want. And I, I don't listen to every show, mm-hmm. but I do listen to shows not to regale myself with what a great contributor I was that morning. Mm-hmm. I usually listen because I'm trying to figure out, what did I do? Yes. What did I do? I, I always talk about this when, I, when we were upstairs. I, I labeled myself the prince of pronouns because okay. I was so sure that people knew what was going on in my head <laughs> that I could refer to people as they or a person as him, and they would know exactly who, along they would know exactly <laughs> what. So I, I tried to make myself better uh-huh. at identifying, uh, identifying. And I try to make myself talk slower because much like you talk about, mm-hmm. naturally I'm a bit of a quick chatter. And, and I try to talk slower two things. One, so I enunciate a bit, mm-hmm. but two, so something doesn't slip out that I don't want. It's true. They're your words. They should have some power behind yeah, them. Yeah, but right? I also don't want some, because sometimes I think it's, I think having a quick wit is okay, mm-hmm. unless it spins out of control on you. Yeah. And, and sometimes something will hit me just right, and something's already coming out of me before I'm like, oh, wait, 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 <laughs> you're not, you're not. You know, we're not standing out in front of the station talking about this. We're talking about it on the air. Yeah. And so it's it's all very hard. So I, I listened to the show to try to think, how can I do this better? Mm-hmm. One of the things I've noticed, though, from going back and listening to the show is the number of views that happen by 9 o'clock mm-hmm. the same day, 9 p.m. Yeah. There, those numbers are really up. So people are going back. Or maybe they're coming home from work or whatever, and there's a lot of views on today's show later in the day. Absolutely. So I really love that, that because our life doesn't let us be real-time people. No. It doesn't really let us be real-time people from whether you have to load up the grandkids to get them somewhere or mm-hmm. you have to do some. Life gets in the way of being a loyal listener. And so it yeah. really lets that happen. It really mm-hmm. does, which my feeling about it is, I don't care when people get a chance to hear us or see us. It's just important. It's important that that they had took they took some of their valuable time to do it. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, and that's what it is. Is is all we're asking for is your time. Right. That's the, and that is one of the most precious things that anybody has to give us. We just got somebody on the honkers log. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't recognize no, him yet. We so. need a spotter's guy. That's it. We have no idea. <laughs> I, need, I need my binoculars. <laughs> and exactly. A Facial recognition. <laughs> it's like a uh, like a bird watchers, but yeah. for vehicles. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's um, it's a, that same um, that same interaction as you as you do it, and it's the time. It's um, it's here's the message. And now, can can you imagine if you do get busy and all of a sudden you're able to pause the radio? Uh-huh. Like, how many times have you been trying to get a number on something, <laughs> trying <laughs> trying to figure out? Okay, what's the rest of the message? Oh, they were gonna tell me where they got that article from. Right. Oh, they were. They, I love this discussion. It's it's going. But you're right. I just got to work. Uh-huh. Oh, or I um, I just have to load the kids right now. Right. Or the carpool finally got here. Or it's uh, what I used to do ESPN in um, Colorado Springs. We had a wife that wrote us and said, could you end your show a half hour earlier? And we were like, well, that's that's rude, madam, yeah, really? please. Thank you. And she said, well, I need you to end it earlier because my husband gets home and sits in the driveway for a half hour <laughs> and listens to the rest of your show. They got us out of the garage. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I said, "Well, I mean, we could we could send you a radio. Like, did you know you could listen to yeah. us online? Give like, us his name. We'll order him in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you yes. go in the house now. Hey, Jimmy, get a get, <laughs> get over. In the house. Put it in park. That's we'll right. wait. That's right. <laughs> we'll wait exactly. As it goes. But if you're right, it's it's the it's the interaction. It's the time we give our time to so many things, mm-hmm. and as it goes and a successful podcast right now 20 minutes at a time really that's it 
20 minutes because how long does it take to usually drive to work? Right. No, you're right. How long does it take to prepare a meal? Mm -hmm. How long does it take to go grocery shopping? So we do most of our lives in these 15 to 30 minute increments of, of planning of I've got to drive here. I've got to pick up this. Oh, I'll leave at quarter after. I'll get there at the bottom of the hour. Things like that. So, um, so what it really does is it kind of breeds us or, or, or prepares us. Bless you. Um, it kind of prepares us for that type of cadence. The other thing is, is how long have we all been watching TV and listening to the radio? Right. 15 minutes. Need my commercial break. 10 right. minutes. Need my commercial break. So we've already been trained on, on the way that media is put together. I mean, radio especially, over 100 years of, of training people. Right. It's Pavlovian at this point where 20 minutes or 15 minutes, oh, it's time to go to commercial break. This does seem like a very long conversation. Mm -hmm. Maybe they should be. So we get a feeling about it. But you're right. Everybody is busy, and we appreciate the time. And what we tried to do, because we appreciated that time, we wanted to make sure that all of our stuff is archived on the YouTube aspect of it. So if you are watching on YouTube or you do go back to YouTube, guess what I've got? I've got a uh, view right here where you can see Larry and I, and you can also see our YouTube page. As you can see, we are live right here, and there's a big subscribe button. Larry, you've subscribed for the uh, station already, right? I have, sure. Yeah, and it was free, right? Nobody turned around and, no. and, and said, here, Larry, here's give me $5. No, you not subscribed. at all. subscribed, nothing like that. But you um, know, what I like about it, yeah. though, is when you subscribe and you check in enough or, and you also hit the little bell. Mm -hmm. You have to hit the little bell. It doesn't hurt to like once in a while. It's true. I might add. It's true. I do like a like. Yeah. But but all of a sudden, I'll be doing something, and I'll get a notice up mm. about something going on at the on uh, on on YouTube at the station. And, I'm, and that doesn't mean I'm going to drop what I'm doing in all the time. But there might be like, oh, that's a good reminder. I know they're going to be doing so-and-so today. Yeah, and I want to do that. I want to do that. So no, it's such it's it's such an improvement, and the quality is so much better. Mm -hmm. Everything is so much better than it was. No, and and it's a great uh, forum for everybody to also get in. Wendy Edwards comes in. That guy. Oh, sorry, I got things in my way. That guy uh, was cool by Mark Cool Blue. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you, Wendy, for checking in. Really appreciate that. But that's it. Um, subscribe right there, and I'm going to do it right here live. I'm going to subscribe to our own stuff. Boom, subscribe to get a little little explosion right. and, and fancy lights as it goes over. And then make sure that you hit that uh, uh, bell as well for all of them. And like Larry said, um, when you are on your phone or you get that we go live you get that notification it pops off for you and you're able to just t one tap and, and like you and i talked about larry it's easy to find the first episode of something right especially with the algorithm's just going to give you something mm -hmm. just to, to suggest something to you right you're going to be able to watch that first episode if you don't like or subscribe to something as you're going like hey i actually did like this YouTube just goes, okay, well, obviously you didn't like it, so I'm going to subscribe something else. I'm going I'm to try to get, or, or show you something else. Mm -hmm. So you got to tell the algorithm what you like. Now, right. we, yes, we are all being spied on. We do get listens and everything else. Sometimes it, it's spooky in nature. It is spooky. <laughs> yes. You say something like, like uh, I can't wait to go skiing. And all of a sudden, you're, you're like, <laughs> wait a minute. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you get, start getting those ads for everything. But, you know, hey, you all hit the yes and I agree and the check mark for everything. Right. So we've all agreed to be listened to. Exactly. <laughs> to get this. But... Um, what YouTube's going to do is YouTube will start suggesting things for you. So even if we're not live, maybe we drop something that is over at the library or we did a live stream over at the farmer's market uh -huh. or we're doing something else that's, that's going in there, you're going to get that notification for it as well. And of course, like and subscribe and everything else. Um, then that's what they mean. It's 100% it's free. It's not going to track you or anything else like that. You are just letting the you're letting Google know that you like WRMN, right? And it's trying to uh, suggest a bit more to you. Well, it it's certainly if you do we are we going? We, we just a second. Yeah, go close. Oh, this okay. Out. Uh, 
if you enjoyed Facebook, mm-hmm. and some people in the beginning don't, there were people who still have some predetermined notion that they don't want anything to do with Facebook. They just don't want to do that. But if you were on there before and you liked it, I promise you, you'll like YouTube better. Okay, yeah, I, I promise you, you will like YouTube better, and you should give it a try. And and not that your day won't be whole without seeing me, <laughs> with, without being seen sonar. With, maybe not without seeing Mark. I understand that completely. But but uh, it the quality, everything is is much better there. So mm-hmm. give that a shot. Yep, we got logos, we've got cameras, we've got lots of different things, and we've got more Larry Jones here on the first shift. Uh, the guy that walked by, Mark Cool Blue. That was the that was the guy who honked. Okay. That was it. Okay. We'll see you on the other side. Be sure to catch the first shift weekday mornings from 6 to 10 a.m. Oh, yeah. That is for important funny. information, like fire tips from Elgin Fire Chief Rob Sagan. The thing in the winter that we're more concerned with is carbon monoxide. Because that we don't get in the summer. That is that carbon monoxide issues occur because of heating equipment. Uh, those anything that is that burns natural gas, if it is faulty, can generate high levels of carbon monoxide, which in time can be fatal. So, I can't emphasize enough the importance of having carbon monoxide detectors in your home. Every single year, you will see somewhere uh, in the country, and and usually we'll get one or two in the Chicagoland area. Well, you'll see multiple fatalities in one home. You can't smell carbon monoxide. You can't taste carbon monoxide. You have no idea it's happening. Mm. And so it's critically important that you have the right detectors in your home. It's the first shift weekday mornings at 6 a.m. with me, Marky B, right here on WRMN. Anderson Japanese Gardens, ranked the highest quality Japanese garden in North America and located right in the heart of Rockford. Their mission is to open minds to a different culture while offering a place of peace and tranquility where one can find healing, renewal, inspiration, and a re-energized soul. A premier destination for corporate functions, special events, weddings, and receptions. For directions, hours, and fees, visit andersongarden.org today. Theory Alt Booth, a leading local law firm, is located on the beautiful Fox River in downtown St. Charles. Here's Ryan Theory Alt. For better or worse, there are just times people need a lawyer. Whether you are involved in a work injury, in an automobile crash, selling a home, or even planning for your estate after your passing, we're here. We're local. We're part of the community. For more information, visit them on the web at tbfirm.com or give them a call at 630-526-4242. It's the time of the year where storms and inclement weather can pop up unexpectedly. If you have a generator powered by a small engine, keep it running like a top. Don't do the tune-up yourself. Let AIM Small Engine Repair at 674 Laurel Street in Elgin handle your generator. AIMS can do oil changes, spark plugs, and make all the necessary adjustments. From simple tune-ups to major repairs, AIM Small Engine can do it all. Don't forget it's not too early to think about a lawnmower tune-up. Call 847-742-8750. Oh no, I just hit that post and my car's got a dent. Uh Uh-oh, better get Mako. Oh yeah? Where are they? Mako is America's body shop. They're the world's largest provider of paint and collision services. They're located at 212 Western Avenue in Carpentersville, across from Spring Hill Mall. I've used them. Check out my car. Wow, looking good. Everything was so easy and affordable. Hummer and staff were super friendly and really knew their stuff. I'm going to call them now. Mention WRMN 1410 at the Carpentersville Mako and receive... 10% off today. Celebrating 70 years of serving the Fox River Valley, WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM is proud to inform and entertain you every day with great local shows that keep you connected with the people in your community, like the Radio Shopping Show, where listeners are encouraged to let us know about their experiences with our business partners. I usually go to Tripleberry during the week. It's not so busy. I had my normal lumberjack omelet. It's like a meat lover's omelet, and uh, their fries are awesome. Just the texture of it, uh, they're a little crisp, soft on the inside. I mean, really good. (laughs) The voice of the valley and the home of the radio shopping show. You are listening to WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM.
Welcome back to WRMN 1410 AM, the voice of the valley, the talk of the town, the home of radio shopping show. I'm here with Larry Jones and also a new guest right here. You've heard his voice before. That'd be Dean Delali. Uh, Delaley, right? Sorry, I keep calling you Delali, Dean. It's Delaley. I'll take it's it. Delaley, right? How That's about we I just figured. say Dino? Dino, That's there he see. is. Dino sitting in here with us as well. I've got to also, Dean, I don't know if you've noticed, I've got my morning voice on today. Yeah. My morning voice. It's it's too early. I can't be excitable sonar like I like I am in the afternoons. People are still waking up, man. Yeah, we have to wean ourselves into it. <laughs> Luckily, I guess I've caught myself a little something in the throat, so I've got that deep radio voice as there well you this go. morning. I got so James Earl Jones in with fit me in. today. <laughs> Your voice though kind of goes. It kind of goes with that music you were playing. I felt like we were oh, like in jazz, some, like jazz, a little yeah. jazz club somewhere, maybe a little Manhattan. Yeah, a little something being cool. Dark piano exactly. bar. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. And yeah, you don't want to be yelling in that place. They'll throw you out. Welcome to Smooth Jazz, yeah, exactly. right here on WRMN. Remember Denai Alexander? That's it. That's oh, just, um, or um, she was something. Who, who's that? Um, Delilah. <laughs> Maybe Arnie. it was. Yeah. Yeah, Delilah is sitting in there. Hey, we're, hey, all you cool the modern cats day and kittens. Dear Abby. <laughs> Dear Abby, that's yeah. right. Well, I think what you need to do is find yourself somebody different. <laughs> Because he's certainly not getting you where you need to go. It's, it's true. But you are getting us, the station, getting us where we need to go, uh, Dean. It has been a grueling, like, four to six weeks that we've just been powering through all kinds of great changes, all kinds of great just renovations as, we, as we're as we going through. What's been What's been your hardest hurdle so far? Short of working with you or what? I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and I, and I say that really joking. I, Sonar is my partner, and I'm Sonar's partner. However you want to say it, we're partners together. And it's like uh, it's like a God partner. You know, you, you pray on this. I've been praying on this for some time. This is a, a, a life dream to be able to be sitting in this chair. I never considered myself to be a broadcaster. Uh, I'm a community guy. I've mm-hmm. been involved in so many different charities, organizations. That's what I do. That's what I like to do. Ordinarily, someone's either going to like Dino, or they're going to say, "Boy, what a pompous butt he is!" You know. <laughs> but and and I get and I say, get believe me. I get they say both. butt? <laughs> well, you have said other things about me, Larry, and I know I can't say that. I don't want no, to, me either. I don't want to be the first one to get a fine on our on our new station. Just try here. to keep it real, you know. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. But and and you know, and I think that's what's cool about WRMed is everybody is just that. Mm. Everybody's real. The gentleman sitting across the table. Uh, he's an engineer, and I don't know if anybody really understands what an engineer is. When we walked in here, um, the operating system that makes these cameras and everything work, we didn't have all this, you know? And he upgraded it the first thing because he wanted a quality product. You know, uh, our job out here, of course, is, yeah, we're in the sales, and we want people to advertise. We want you to subscribe to our YouTubes and our Facebooks, you know, like us everywhere you possibly can, because that helps our ratings. But we want to be able to deliver a quality program and a quality show, and we want to be the talk of the town. We want to be the voice Mm -hmm. of the Fox River Valley. You hear me say it, yes, we're based in Elgin, proud to be here, 75 years. We're celebrating 75 years in operation and we are so lucky to have that title uh mr jagel was the one who carried it a a, a long part of the way bill Mm -hmm. pollock uh took care of it uh ended up with some bad luck with that COVID that's killed Mm -hmm. so many different businesses but driving in listening to you talk about this is a medium that you could tune on right now hear us live hear what's going on Mm -hmm. if you're a morning riser and we want to bring back, uh, we all remember, Larry, you remember listening to WGN. I mean, WGN is, they're my heroes. I, I wish we could be WGN uh-huh. because everything they've done has been a home run. And I used to listen 
and we were talking about it Saturday, hoping that there was enough snow that we got to stay home. Oh, me too. Mm-hmm. And there would be on the bottom the little ticker, which schools were open, which schools were closed. Mm-hmm. You know, WRFN wants to be that radio station to now report what's happening in the Fox River Valley. We know what's going on everywhere else. We know the national news. They have that new uh, News Nation, which is a WGN uh, production. And then we have the local news, 2579. So we want to be your voice. We want to be the talk of the town. We need you. We keep asking you, call in. You know, you go to your phones. We all have the smartphones. All you have to do is say, what is it, Siri? Is that the name? Yeah, of it? say Siri or Alexa or yeah. Google and say, listen to WRMN or play WRMN. And you're going to get us pop right up. We have an app. That's it. We're big time. Well, we'll be right back um, right after the news. Um, Dean and I and Jones will go ahead and um, and just talk a little bit more about what the future of WRMN is. If you got any questions, 847-931-1410. We'll see you on the other side. Columbia College of Missouri Elgin Campus is intent in their commitment to open doors and support those who strive for excellence. Too many people have been made to feel that higher education isn't a place for them, that it is someone else's dream. But Columbia College of Missouri has changed all that. With individualized attention and ongoing support, Columbia College knows a future built by you is a future built for you. Columbia College of Missouri Elgin Campus, your new starts now. Visit ccis.edu. A recent Gallup poll indicated that 38% of Americans are putting off health care because of financial concerns, the highest ever recorded. I'm Dr. Bob Martin, here to serve you every Sunday afternoon from 1 to 4. Millions of Americans are seeking health advice that will not cost an arm and a leg, so I offer health tips and advice absolutely free. Listen to my show, Sunday afternoons from 1 to 4, right here on WRMN, AM 1410 and 96.7 FM, the voice of the valley and the home of radio shopping show. Your hometown radio station since 1949. We are WRMN AM 1410, Elgin time, 8 o'clock. With your AM 1410 WRMN News Flash, I'm Sean Kernan. Brought to you by Sky Rizzi. Explore proven results with Sky Rizzi. In a newly announced commercial property deal, a 53,000 square foot warehouse lease has been negotiated by Lee & Associates on behalf of Bullfrog International. A luxury hot tub designer and manufacturer now expands its presence in Elgin at 1320 Gateway Drive. A child missing from South Elgin has been found safe after six years. Kayla Unbahan has been located alive at Asheville, North Carolina, her mother Heather Unbahan standing accused of child abduction following a custody loss. The pair were identified by an employee of a secondhand clothing store who remembered them from a feature on Unsolved Mysteries. King County State's Attorney Jamie L. Mosser has reported that the election complaint hotline received five calls during the general primary election day voting. Three were related to electioneering, one was about privacy during a voter registration, and the last one dealt with a missing race due to a boundary error. With your AM 1410 WRMN News Flash, I'm Sean Kernan. Get the one and done you want for your dog's monthly protection. Next Guard Plus, a Foxalon or Moxidectin and Pyrantal chewable tablets. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious beef flavored soft chew. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting a preventive. Ask your vet about Next Guard Plus chews. Progressive asks, what do a late night pizza craving? Pizza place. Can I get one large pepperoni pizza? A newly licensed teen delivery driver. A guaranteed delivery time or it's free offer. And your front fence have in common? Uh oh. That's my fence! They can turn your stomach upside down in under 30 minutes. I'm still getting a tip, right? Bundle your home and auto with Progressive for great savings and round the clock protection. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states or situations. 
Come on out to the country, country donuts that is, at Route 20 and Nestler Road. They're always open. Donuts are made daily using only the finest ingredients to ensure freshness. Their huge variety of donuts offers something to please everyone. Country Donuts doesn't stop at offering you the best donuts. Enjoy a delicious breakfast sandwich or stop in for lunch and try a bowl of their famous chili. Need a larger or special donut order for your office? Call 847-488-1900. The Distance Social, your spot for great craft cocktails with meaningful conversation. Whether you're out entertaining a group or out for a memorable nightcap, The Distance Social is your spot for starting or ending the perfect evening. Located at 314 North River Street in beautiful East Dundee, Illinois. Go the distance and find your social at The Distance Social. Progressive presents the Sports Flash on News Talk Radio 1410 WRMN. The Wizards beat the Bulls 107 to 105 last night. DeMar DeRozan 27 points in the loss. Chicago drops to 34 and 38. For Washington, it was their season high third straight win. The Wizards just 14 and 58 on the season, eight and 30 away from home. Chicago's lost three in a row. They're ninth in the East, a game and a half ahead of Atlanta. NHL: The Blackhawks host the Flames tonight. Puck drop at 7:30 United Center. Chicago already eliminated from playoff contention. They're coming off a five. Four victory on the road at San Jose. NCAA men's hoops this Thursday, Sweet 16 East Regional, third seed Illinois battle, second seed Iowa State. The Cubs are set for opening day. They made some roster moves on Monday. Outfielder Alexander Canario, right-hander Hayden Wesneski optioned to AAA Iowa. The team also released catcher Jorge Alfaro. Bundle auto and home, renters or condo, and save with Progressive. I'm Chuck Sanders on News Talk Radio 1410 WRMN. Taco Bell just dropped the new Cravings value menu. Now you can get 10 items for $3 or less, which means you can get the food you want for the price you want. It's almost like you can have your cake and eat it too. But in this case, it's a double stack taco from the new Cravings value menu. So basically, you can have your double stack taco and eat it too, which is a lot crunchier than cake. The new Cravings value menu is here. Get it at Taco Bell today. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Contact store for price and participation, which vary. Tax extra. And now Martha Stewart for Skechers. When I make a dish or embark on a craft project, I always use the finest, most fabulous ingredients and materials. Which is why, when it comes to footwear, I love Skechers. Because Skechers is the comfort technology company and uses the most luxurious, innovative materials and designs to make wondrously comfortable footwear with all the fits and features like ArchFit and Skechers' world-famous air-cooled memory foam. It's exactly the way I Looking to get your fingers on some delicious grub? Look no further than Sticky Fingers in Carpentersville. Family owned and operated, Sticky Fingers specializes in chicken, fish, and shrimp, which you can choose to have dusted with flavor or doused in the sauce of your choice. Sticky Fingers strives to provide flavorful food with fresh, locally sourced ingredients. Sticky Fingers personally invites you to stop by and try one of their scrumptious dishes today. For exceptional home-cooked meals, visit the longest family-owned restaurant in Elgin. Paul's Family Restaurant at Lawrence and McLean takes pride in their fresh daily specials like steaks, fish, pasta, soups, and more. Paul's fresh buttermilk pancakes and breakfast skillets are phenomenal. As you walk in, you can't help but notice owner Elaine's wonderful eye for detail. The toughest decision you'll have to make is what size leftover box to take home. Call 847-695-8687. WRMN, this is the first shift. My name is Dennis Sonar Green. I am filling in for Marky B. Don't miss Marky B next week, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. I was lucky enough just to start at 7 because you know what, uh, Larry? I set the dang schedule. So, <laughs> so uh, 
<laughs> Why be in charge of something if you can't make it work for you? <laughs> exactly. Uh, sitting in here with me today is uh, Dino as well with Larry Jones. Um, and I appreciate both of these fellas being here with me this early in the AM. Um, we've got to do a little bit smoother transitions here in the AM instead of the explosive afternoons that right. we try to do for just, the uh, out to lunch. Which is smooth. 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 Write it in, right? We don't need to be scaring anybody for no, anything. No. Oh, listen, while I'm thinking about it, though, people always worry about Mark when he goes off on vacations. Yeah. I don't know why, but they act like he's completely incapable of handling a vacation. <laughs> but I was texting with him last night. He is successfully... In Florida, set up, doing fine. He's successfully uh, successfully vacationing right now. He's successfully done what 98% of Americans do at least once a year. He's pulled it off. Congratulations. That's Mark. right. Exactly. Yes. He's been sending some emails with some good ideas. So oh, yeah? I think the time away has given him a little time to... His, cre his creative juices are you know flowing. I mean, I think it's back to yeah. where it... Uh, good for him. Get a flavor of what's going on, sure. Yep. That's it. So we've got Dean here talking about um, some of our um, vision for WRMN. And honestly, the theme of today is how do you connect with WRMN? Are you a text liner? Are you a call in to Studio 14, 847-931-1410, 847-931-1410? Or are you one of these handy dandy fancy uh cell phony type of type of people that love to watch or be part of it there's also the fact that you could just tell your smart speaker so i've got a couple of googles and a single alexa in the house we keep alexa kind of in the corner just so she doesn't mess with it all the rest of everybody um but the uh the googles i just tell my smart speaker hey play wrmn and if I say play WRMN on YouTube, uh -huh. it will fire up the YouTube channel. Oh. If I say play, just play WRMN, oh, it a... opens the TuneIn app and right. just starts starts playing. See, all you got to do is talk. That's, That's it. it. Yeah, well, I mean, we've come so far in technology I know. that, like, there isn't any more, like, hook up this wire and flip this switch and twist these dials. You're now at the voice command it's stage. It's almost <laughs> aggravation free. You know that? It's almost <laughs> aggravation free, which is a nice thing. Because uh -huh. you, you guys have gone from the waiting for tubes to warm up. Yes. Waiting for the CRT television. You guys, you look you right guys. at Larry and you guys. I here. You, that's it, you guys, uh -huh. right? It's like now, now, sure. I was young enough to still be considered the remote. Yeah. So hey, go and turn that dial, twist that thing. I, so I, I, I still had that, but I didn't get to the point where I had to wait for tubes to load up. But right. you guys have gone from all the way to that to straight on voice command before you know it you guys are going to be able to tell your car where you want to go i know and maybe you won't even have to tell maybe it'll f it we, <laughs> we're suspicious and knows what we're thinking now maybe maybe you'll be like thinking oh no oh no i, I wanted to go to walgreens but i was thinking about mcdonald's and look where i'm at <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so speaking of of that speaking of directions and um and where are we pointing these things and what are your thoughts dean um we've talked a little bit about um what we're moving towards and you said the system is what we wanted we wanted to make sure it was go we've got a philosophy of duck on the water is when you look out to a nice placid lake as it sits right there a nice let's just paint paint a picture right theater of the mind of of radio of a nice duck that's out there in the middle of the water it's how does that duck just move so gracefully you know under the surface of that water those feet are just going ham just moving and kicking and everything else but that's not what the duck wants to wants to uh, show you and that's what we kind of do over here is we want to make sure that what we put out is a nice clean product as it goes now if there's six fires in the back you aren't going to know anything about yeah. that because we're going to handle it and we're going to make sure that it all gets put together our, our job is to put on that fire helmet mm -hmm. get out there and, and having that fire background you know disasters um they kind of come natural they're pretty easy to handle I'm a detail guy. When we set up a procedure, like I got a list of notes here. I got a whole bunch of stuff. 
Those are just a little something in case I forget to bring something up. The notes mean nothing. It should all be up here, mm -hmm. and we all have it here. We all have a gift of gab, or we wouldn't be on this this radio station. Well, oh, and the eye for detail, too. I mean, you guys were he. both police officers, uh, first responders. Hello across the street. Oh, yeah. um, right here on, uh, on Douglas, we like to say hello to our neighbors. Come be a neighbor. Come say hi to us. Um, but you guys have, um, I guess all of us have that first responder side of it. Me as a Navy veteran, the two of you as police officers and first responders as well. How important is it to set up a system and lean on the system? Oh, it's very, I mean, when things go bad or when you're in a very, when you're in a very stressful situation, you rely on your training. Mm -hmm. You rely on your training. And, and even more now, all, every agency, every first responder agency now pre-plans everything, which mm -hmm. makes, uh, they are unbelievable how they're able to look at almost any bad scenario that can happen. And they already know what they're going to do. Now, there'd be a little variable in there, mm -hmm. but they know, they know. And, and no, that's what you have to do. You have to do. And, and I think you do. I think you have to put everything to training. <laughs> Your training just becomes intuitive. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a different person, you being in the military, you know, Larry with the police department, myself, police, fire. We are different. Everybody hears it. You know, we're running in while everybody else is running out. Mm -hmm. It takes a unique individual. And it's not we're superheroes or we're super people. It's just what we've chosen to do. Mm -hmm. But that pre-planning is so crucial. Um, our training officer was Lieutenant Ray McBride, and he I, I got on as a cadet. And he would put us through rigorous training of every compartment within that fire engine uh, or truck, if it was a ladder truck. And we would be blindfolded, and we mm -hmm. would have to identify where every item was. The idea behind that, you have a, a smoke-filled scene, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, it's dark, it's whatever it is, and you're fumbling through, you want to know to go which compartment, where it's at now. Mm -hmm. Seconds count. Seconds count. I mean, I can't tell you how important it is. How about it, Larry? Mm -hmm. You get on the scene, whether it's an active shooter, whether it's a fire with people trapped upstairs, you know, you have to know what nozzle, what, what line to pull, mm -hmm. where's the ladder, where's the latch. So all of that, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. goes right to the training, and it just becomes intuitive. You just second nature. You could do it blindfolded. You mm -hmm. close your eyes. And I think it's, you know where things are. It's that knowledge versus fear, right? Yeah, absolutely. We can we can run into a burning building. I can rescue a fe a fellow sailor. I can jump into the middle of the ocean. We can um, go into an active shooter side of it because. We have that knowledge right. behind us. It adds to your confidence. It really does. Mm -hmm. It adds to your confidence. You already know. You you know you can do it. You know it's possible to do it. There you go. Uh, yes. And that's why I'm trying to bring it back over to WRMN with what we're doing here is the system is there. The, syst the people are in place. So now let's lean on the system and it's lean on each other f to essentially go on without that fear. We don't need to fear a, 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 a mishap on the air. We don't need to fear a technical drop or a failure of the station because we've built that system and we're building that trust within the system and the knowledge in that system. So now we can move forward with confidence. And how much smoother is everything with that confidence? Mm -hmm. I mean, w when you've already had something bad happen, and now you are able to like, oh, this ain't half as bad as, as what it you as as that last time I was there. That confidence uh, shines. You'll, each each experience you learn from it. Mm -hmm. You should take a little something away. Again, I reference show notes. Show notes are important, but whether I read them with the this, that, they, or the them, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows but me. And we're the biggest critiques. Right? We're the mm -hmm. biggest we critics of ourselves. Yeah, we listen if to more of do. the station than yeah. you guys do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shoot, I should have said it this way. But the average listener still got something uh -huh. out of what we shared. And that's why you know I keep bringing it to the people. We want to be your community broadcast station. 
you know, you look at the, the YouTube, Mark's been working on this show for several years. And then you go and look at the YouTube, and it shows like maybe there's only 15 or 16 people listening. I'm sure a whole lot less today because they don't want to listen to me. But the, <coughs> but the idea is he has built up a base, mm-hmm. and he has made connections with other people within the community, yeah. which is just, uh, you know, paramount. And the idea is we don't know what we're doing right or what we're doing wrong. For those of you who just turned the dial on, it doesn't come up on our screens Mm -hmm. to give us data. Please make the phone call. Young, old, whatever you have to say. You have something negative. You don't like the way we're dressed. You don't like what we're talking about. Bring it up. We want to hear it. We Mm -hmm. want to address it. If it's within our power... Well, maybe make some changes. I'm to not it. changing clothes. Well, yeah. <laughs> I kind of like what you got. Anyway. Okay, thanks. Oh, so wait till the swimsuit yeah. competition. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. that'll be a day. Oh my God, <laughs> I know. But you'll get reviews, but they're not going to be good ones. Yeah, exactly. If I'm wearing one, they'll be, they'll be like screaming, "Take that off! Take that off!" <laughs> but we want to hear from you. I can't stress that enough. And I think you guys want to hear it, yeah. too. Don't we want to hear what's going on? Absolutely. Right. And JP it, Car Shows has already said good morning to us. We nice. thank you. John Polero, the car czar. Hey, the there you go. Just We've got the be... Sultan of, of South Elgin. And, We've got and, the car czar. The car czar. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. We're going to have the, uh, the the king of coupons or, or whatever. <laughs> that could happen. <laughs> that, could, that really could happen, actually. And yes. you, you talk about the cop. Mm-hmm. We've been doing the America First Responders Fest, which was born from Back the Blue, right? Mm. That uh, Marky had started, and we have a, a nice crew now, a good staff working uh, to make, which is coming up, I think, September the ninth. Um, so look for, look for more information on that. But you watch Mr. Polero work; he is just cool as can be, and you know you get some of these guys that these cars, I mean, they're worth. Several thousands of oh, dollars. Larry, yeah, yeah. you have one. Yeah. And, you know, you get some guy leaning on your car. Oh, man. And they're all freaking out because, you know, it's, <laughs> and if it's going to rain, God forbid, they got 50 blankets in case it hails and everything else. So he has to deal with a lot of personalities, too. Mm-hmm. Sure. So we all do it. We all do it in our own way. But the way he pulls off those car shows, and he puts out a beautiful display for Well, us. you got your wish, Dino. We've got our first caller already. Hello, hey, caller. Go. Where are you listening from? Good morning, man. How are you? Do, Good. I'm doing well. I know that yeah. voice. Where are you listening, where are you, uh, listening to, uh, caller? Well, I listen on the app all the time religiously. I uh, listen if I'm driving and I'm within range. I listen on the radio. To me, radio is a mobile device, more or less a mobile genre. So Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I listen. The app is great because I'm always moving, doing things around the house or here or there. So that's my uh, that's my mode of listening. In generally speaking, YouTube is great. Everybody loves it, but it's more stationary, and Mm -hmm. my mornings are a little bit more compressed. Uh, than to allow that sort of uh, viewing. We appreciate you taking us with you. Um, do you ever use your um, your phone and just say uh, play WRMN, or do you uh, actively go for the app and say, you know what, I just hit out of range, let me just flip it over? You know, Sonar, I'm not that sophisticated. And mm-hmm. also, you know, once you get into a routine, I mean, it, it, clicking on the app is one, two, three, it takes nothing at all. So that's what go. I do. So I just click on the app, boom, and there you are. Wonderful. We try to make it easy for you. Um, what's your favorite programming? Uh, in terms of what? What, what, what do you, uh, what show do you, is this, you mean, or? yeah, as far as W, well, it really in general, what, uh, what type well, of radio do you like to listen to? Radio, to? You know, I, uh, I've been listening to radio since the early 1960s, since I was a little boy. My mom had a little box radio on top of the refrigerator, and we listened to WGN mm-hmm. religiously. Wally Phillips, Bill Berg, um, Roy Leonard, Orion Samuelson, I can go right down the list, and as I got older in the 70s and 80s, you know, all my friends, college friends, were listening to uh, Steve Dahl, Stephen Gary, mm-hmm. uh, Johnny B in the 80s. 
Um, they were okay, but I never made that transition. I'd rather listen to WGN. If you remember, Larry, there was a very erudite and very articulate and very diverse radio personality who was a professor at the University of Chicago, Dr. Milt Rosenberg. Sure. He was on yeah. WGN at night, and he would have a show. One night, the show would be about the Chicago outfit. Mm-hmm. The next show would be about the discovery of a new planet somewhere in the far reaches of the solar system. The next show would be about how corrugated boxes are manufactured. Then a show about gardening. Then a show about sports. Mm-hmm. He was so varied in his interest and so intelligent on speaking on so many different subjects. It was absolutely one of my all-time favorite shows. I was lucky WGN. enough to actually run uh, Milt Rosenberg's show um, on no WCGO. Kidding. Yeah, so he moved over when he when he left uh, GN. Uh, he came over to WCGO, and he ran, I believe, two to three hours a day. Um, we had a great producer, uh, Daniel French, that was helping him out with that. And um, we ran his show Monday through Friday um, in the afternoons, uh, and we were the last station to uh, to hold him. And it was amazing seeing that guy in studio every yeah. day. And yeah, he, he was great. And I've gotten to be friendly yeah. with his son. His son's out in um, – his son was writing for an online mm-hmm. – entity an online newspaper quasi newspaper for quite some time and he's out on the west coast now but we got to be pretty friendly uh over the years too so that's was, amazing uh, good component larry who, do you listen one. to any of those people that you were I did, talking about i, I did I, I was thinking as as george was talking there that uh oh the subsequent caller yeah the subsequent <laughs> he, he's not my subsequent <laughs> caller but anyway that you know we when I first went on the police department, we had no radios in the in the squad cars, no AM okay. radios. So everybody had like a transistor kind of wedged in the windshield, especially <laughs> on night shift. But I would listen. Uh, I remember Franklin McCormick. What was? Do you remember that, George? Franklin McCormick. Sure. The, was it the Meisterbrow Showcase or something like that? Uh, uh, I think it was. I, I think it was. Nice and they, were, they had great music, or they'd be, I'd be able to pick up in the middle of the night. You could hear some of the best radio from all over the United States wow. because the skip would be coming in. And uh, uh, it was like, especially, again, on nights, winter, mm-hmm. nothing going on, perfect way to pass the time. Radio was my partner. Yeah. It was my well, partner. Larry, I'm sure you remember, and Dean does too, uh, and I love this guy. Um, when Eddie Schwartz was on WIND and then yes. he trans, yeah. uh, yes. uh, trans, transferred <clears throat> the um, transition to WGN, and Larry Schreiner was a roving reporter. He was a former police officer. He was. Police officer. And he must have had a police scanner and a fire scanner back in those days. And this guy, because I would be out until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, I wasn't doing things that were uplifting the community. I was just looking for whatever I would run into. But Larry Schreiner was in his car. He'd be at a fire at 67th and Cottage Grove. 20 minutes later, he'd be at a police scene at Belmont, in Austin. You could never keep up with the guy. He was great. And on the scene reporting, it was so exciting because he'd be talking to Eddie Schwartz because Eddie did the uh, late nights. Um, overnight, and he'd say, yep, I'm on my way here, I'm on my way there. And you were right there in the action, camera's eye, right there. And he was uh, a Chicago was guy. He sounded like he a was Chicago absolutely. guy. Absolutely. He was like John Bulldog Drummond. Yeah, Chicago exactly. Drummond. You know, his but when he retired from the police, his job was he was the, they, in Chicago, they had what they call a street deputy, which was a deputy superintendent. They had one on duty for the entire city okay. all the time. And, and Larry Schreiner was a driver for the street deputy. And then when he retired, <clears> he just became... Because he, I think he established kind of a, a base by being at the scene of everything. Yeah. And so that's kind of what he moved into. He, he went into that. And uh, he was an interesting guy. I it, thought he was an interesting guy. It is, it is neat to see what you grow into that's right. as, as whatever broadcaster or whatever uh, adjacent side that you've got. We've got the car czar coming in and saying Bob Collins was the best at WGN. His death yeah, was tragic. Yeah, Bob Collins was great. And Michael, then we've got Michael. Michael said, Dell was great. Yep. Uh, uh, Double Five Chevy Mike checking in. Good morning, guys. Good morning to you too, Double Mike. Yes. Yeah. You know when Larry when Larry would talk, it was like it was like the Hindenburg. Every single every call he was on, 
the tenacity and the excitement he had. He really oh, it. we got a 311 fire, <laughs> yeah. and we got yeah. firemen all over the place. <laughs> we hear there's 14 people trapped, but they heroically got them all out, and they saved the dog, too. Yeah. Wow. You know? So he was he was into it. If it was a, a police situation, right. same thing. Yes, he didn't you know, adapt. I had the feeling that the guy never slept. Never. Right. <laughs> always, always out, always out. Yeah, he, he didn't adapt to radio. Radio adapted to him. There you go. I mean, really, there he you go. he never got that smooth. Hello, I'm on the scene. Yeah. Of he was still, he was a retired cop telling you about a fire he was at or a shooting or something like, like that. Oh, my, look how exciting. Yeah, this exactly. Is. Yeah. In, yep. in, in, in broadcasting, just like with an emergency communications, because I was a 911 coordinator and we had a guy, Captain Hoppy, was teaching us how to talk on the radio. Hmm. And he says, you don't pull up to the scene and say, uh, 808's out of scene, we got a working fire, we got flames coming from all over the place. He says, you're supposed to pull up, be nice and calm, mm -hmm. get onto the scene and say, 808's on the scene, we got a working fire, <laughs> and a fire coming all over the place. <laughs> so it was kind of funny the way yeah. he said it is, yeah. you get caught yeah, up yeah, in that, that moment. You, uh -huh. you can't, you can't not. You can't stop it. You can't, you can't, you can't yeah. that. You know? Well, nope. it's, it's a good thing to call it away, too. I mean, that's, that's what they trained us in the Navy, is before you go and fight the thing, call it away yes. so that you know backup's coming. Because yeah. what, if, what if whatever you're doing stops you, and now there is nobody here oh, to, no. to help I you agree. on the way. Yeah, I agree. Um, on the way, I really appreciate your um, your call there, George, the, the previous Sonar, I caller. Wanna, I just yeah. want to make one more point. Go ahead. You brought up the Navy. Yeah. Who you Navy? I was able, and this is, speaks to the community connections that we have in general and through this radio station, and I was able to write a mistake I made 50 years ago. I'll go back to March 24th, 1974. It was my mom's birthday was the day before March 23rd. My brother and sister-in-law went on their very first date. It mm. was March 24th, 1974, the day after my mom's birthday. Now, I knew a lot about movies. I've always known a lot about movies. And my brother asked me, I'm going to take Star, his future wife, to see a movie. What should I go see? You know about these things. I don't. <laughs> so I told him to go see a movie. And it's got a Navy theme. It's called The Last Detail. Do you know that movie, Sonar? I do not know that movie. I Jack might have Nicholson seen it before, but I'll have to check it out. Yeah, Jack Nicholson stars in it. It's yes. about two career sailors assigned to escort an emotionally disturbed uh, young recruit to prison. He's going to be doing eight years in prison for stealing $40. Wow. So they take him out of the town for this transition while they're taking them to prison. They stop here. They stop there. They ain't stop at a bar. So that's not exactly a first date type of movie. But I had read Vincent Canby, the great New York Times film critic, said it was one of the best movies of the year. I said, okay, this is good. Go see one of the best movies of the year. I should have said, go see What's Up, Doc, or uh, <laughs> yeah, a date movie. Uh, uh, Love Story, or Summer of 42, yes. The Way We Were, some kind of rom-com. But no, I sent him to see The Last Detail. And I remember the next morning, my brother said to me, what the, what's that? What was that all about? <laughs> so anyway, I have never, been, I have never lived this down. 50 years, never lived it down. Well, Sunday, I finally was able to level the playing field. Ronald Nessie, my sister-in-law, has loved Elvis since she was a little girl. Loves Elvis Presley. And Ronald Nessie had the ultimate Elvis experience at the, um, at the Arcada. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Ron has the Arcada. He has the displays. Love, love, love Ron Onesti. Such a strong community contributor. I know Ron pretty well, but I don't know him as well as Dean Delaney knows him. Dean and Ron are pretty tight. So I talked to Dean. I said, you know, I don't want to ask anybody for anything because I'm a giver, not a taker. Dean said, call him, Ron. I'll be glad to help you out. I didn't want anything for free. I just wanted really good seats. I'll pay for them. I called Ron. Um, and I said, Ron, and I told him the story, and he said, okay. He said, uh, I, I got two tickets for you right at this, right up at, uh, right at the stage. I said, okay, you know, just let me know. I'll give you my credit card. Oh, no, 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 no. He said, we're all in this together. Wow. I'm not charged. I said, Ron, please, you're running a business. Nope, nope, nope. So that was uh, my leveling the playing field now, finally, with my brother and sister-in-law for sending them to see the last well. detail. Thanks to Ron <laughs> Onesti and the two tickets that he gave me, and they loved the show. My sister-in-law is very emotive. She's um, <coughs> uh, very emotional, and she loved the show so much. She was sobbing at the end of the show. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. 
<laughs> you know, adding adding to what you're saying with Ron Onesti, I mean, nobody could say enough nice things about Ron. Every holiday time, he has put on the air, look, if you need a gift, if you need yep. some tickets, come on over, <laughs> see me. He says, I'll set you up. I'll be happy to get you tickets to any of my shows. And he has the Arcada. He's got the Displays Theater. In fact, he'll be joining us in one way or another. We've had several discussions. We're just waiting to launch things properly. But yeah. Ron has been a giver uh, within the Italian community. The, the strives he has made uh, there alone, but just as a businessman uh, and with his brother side by side, uh, Stephanie, his assistant, he's got a crew of people that one's, one's kinder than the other. And they just had an Elvis three weeks ago, and I, too, had a veteran that all I was looking for was, hey, Rod, if you can get him a nice seat. He, right. he made a deal of, of, or a point, rather, to go and see those folks that I had sent and welcome them to his theater. I mean, what yeah. more can you say wow. about the man? And yeah, this, this is this is what he guy. represents, and he's he's, and you know, he's our kind of guy. And you mentioned Ron's Ron's a businessman, very successful businessman, very he's good. A good businessman. But I tell you what's even more is he's a showman, and he loves mm -hmm. what he's doing. And you can tell. We did some concert promotions back. I don't know where what was that ten years ago, twelve years ago when the Grand Duke was putting those concerts on. Yes. And Ron Onesti was uh, the promoter one year. And Ron is just so effervescent about everything. And so, and you get a sense, yes, this guy knows what he's doing. He knows the industry. He knows the ins and outs. But he also loves it. He's a fan. And there's nothing like being a fan of what you're doing. And mm -hmm. really, it just shows through in everything he does. So, uh -huh. and, he, and he is welcomed by all the stars. I mean, he is recognized by them as, as a friend not just as a promoter, like what you're saying. I yeah. mean, Ron knows these people, you know, intimately, and, and he is just, he's really, uh, he's just developed what he does to such a beautiful art. Yeah. Well, thank you, George. Well, thank you for being enough, here. Guys. Okay. And Thanks, we George. really appreciate you listening. Good Thanks. to hear you, George. Keep up, keep up the good work. Wonderful. Thank you. That was it. That was previous caller. Um, thank you, George, for being there. Thank you, Mr. Anestes, as well. Um, and thank you, two gentlemen. We're wrapping up the hour. We're going to come back with one more segment. Um, talk a little bit about the design of WRMN. You have some plans for the website. We're getting business cards, you know, we're making it official. We got to get some paperwork, right? I mean, we're real achievers. <laughs> we're going to have business cards. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> I keep telling people my business cards are in the shop. Yeah. They're getting, they're getting rotated. Uh, you're listening to WRMN 1410 AM right here on the first shift. I've got Larry, I've got Dean, and I've got you um, right here with us. We'll talk to you soon. Click this link now to review my bank transfer. I didn't make a bank transfer. Ugh, another phishing message. Are you frustrated by these two? So much of our lives are online today. To make sure my information is protected, I checked out CISA's Secure Our World resources. They've got four simple ways we can stay safe online. First, learn to recognize and report phishing. Next, create a strong, unique password for each online account and use a password manager if you can. Then turn on multi-factor authentication for extra security and you'll receive a code when logging in. And finally, turn on automatic software updates for convenience and safety. Click here to track my delivery. Another phishing message. But now I know how to protect myself from scammers and you can learn too. Go to CISA at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world for more quick, easy tips to be safer online. How many times have you heard about or driven past the Volo Auto Museum and still haven't checked it out? They have over 200,000 square feet of heated showrooms filled with countless collections of the most amazing mechanical marvels in the world. From incredible collector cars, movie cars, trains, boats, and planes, to a Disney gallery, dinosaurs, vintage arcades, kiddie rides, and a medieval torture exhibit, plus the Titanic Museum. They're open every day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit volofun.com. 
For local information and fun times in the mornings, listen to Marky B and Larry Jones on the first shift. Maybe we need to get a radio intern in to help you. Maybe so. Somebody that you won't have to pay and you can treat them tough. I can haze them. You can't haze. You'll get fired. (laughs) Remember that guy from Northwestern? Yeah. Gone. Did he really do it? You don't have to really do it. If somebody says you did, good enough. Maybe I'm going to accuse you of hazing me. I don't have to prove it. (laughs) It's the first shift. Weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. right here on WRMN. Keep informed with everything that's going on with the Radio Shopping Show by joining our VIP text club today. All you have to do is text the message WRMN1410 to the number 94253 and you're in. You'll receive timely information about Shopping Show specials instantaneously as they happen. Message and data rates may apply. The voice of the Valley and the home of the Radio Shopping Show, we are WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM. Tanqueria Las Cumbres, Crystal Lake's authentic Mexican restaurant on Grant Street is open for carryout. For over 15 years, Tanqueria Las Cumbres has been serving up all of your favorite Mexican dishes and doing it better than the rest. Recently voted the best in McHenry County. Stop in and carry out the authentic taste of Mexico and see for yourself. Support local for lunch and dinner today and place an order from Taqueria Las Cumbres. Call 815-455-8200 for Taqueria Las Cumbres of downtown Crystal Lake. If you are 50 years and older, you are welcome to join Elgin State Bank sponsored movie days at Elgin Marcus Theater. It will always be on the second Thursday of each month. Doors open at 8.30 a.m. At 9 a.m., you will hear a very brief message from Sherry Ashenbrenner about upcoming senior events, and movies will begin at approximately 9.30 a.m. Coffee and a donut is complimentary. You can always call the movie theater hotline number of 847 888 7976 to find out what movies are playing each month. The cost is $3 if you are a member of Elgin State Bank, meaning you have an account there, and $5 if you are a non-member. And for more senior information, catch Sherry's Senior Showcase on the third Tuesday of every month at 9.15 a.m. right here on WRMN, AM 1410 and 96.7 FM. Welcome back to WRMN 1410 AM, the voice of the valley, the talk of the town. As the sun comes up, our energy level is just getting zapped up to the top. We're getting into the rhythm here at WRMN. Joining me today has been Dino and, of course, Larry Jones. And, Larry, you've got a message for everybody. You want to get out there? I do. You need to learn how to play the organ like Mark. Bump, bump, bump. There you go. Bump, bump, yeah, but, like but, that. I, yeah, but, I need a I keyboard. Mean, I don't want to make you feel bad, but he <laughs> plays better than you. And, oh, okay. So. <laughs> but when he plays it, I know it's time to talk about S and Sports B is in Blog Nation. The blog that's got it. That there is a blog for every sport you're interested in. To get the SB Nation, you need to get the App Store. Get the app, the SB Nation app for your smartphone or your tablet. You can always log in at SBNation.com. When you get there, please stop by the Knights and Ice blog. See what everybody Shepard Price writing about. Then you can go anywhere. Want to add your two cents about what the Bears are doing? That's the place. Mm-hmm. Want to add your two cents because the Sox are doing nothing? That's the place. <laughs> but anyway, there is a blog for anything you're interested in. You can add your opinion if you want to, but you don't have to. What I like best is you can go there when you want to want to so do us all a favor check out sb nation see if sports blogging is for you which one do you um do you follow i usually stop i usually stop at the bears i get i get too angry at the white Sox. inactivity when you're not a good team that's mm-hmm. not that's not a friend yeah i mean pretty soon you look and you feel like screaming do something even if it's wrong <laughs> exactly. just do something just don't insult me by thinking this is okay <laughs> it's like poking a dead body with a stick you're that's just right like, get, you're not gonna get nothing yeah, do something <laughs> yes exactly yep <laughs> that's it we've got dean Dela- uh, delaley here with us as well thank you dean for being here as always appreciate well, it you know one of the things that i did want to try to express and let everybody know we've talked about the operating system, mm-hmm. which uh, we were here till wee hours of the morning putting that oh, thing goodness, in. Yes, and uh, I didn't do much other than yeah, the lights on, the lights off. Here's this wire. Sold our actually, 
uh, put everything in at it, but it, it's, it's paid us dividends. You can just hear us. Don't let my voice uh, be a depiction of how good we sound because I got a little something going on in the throat here. But we're working toward, again, inclusion. This is your radio station. It's a community radio station. Um, we've taken our offices and put them all on the main floor. We've got mm -hmm. sales. We've got production. We've got the engineer, myself, our program director. Um, we're all on the main floor with, you know, adjo not adjoining, but we have obviously doors in our offices. But we're able to, if we get something hot, something that's going on, we're excited about it. We could scream out the door, and we actually have a water fountain right in the hallway. We could all gather and say, hey, we just got so-and-so. They're going to join us on the show. That's or, awesome. You know, and the idea of that is to keep everybody in the loop, everybody involved. You know, we all say we're all in sales. Yes, we all are. We have to sell. That's what keeps us going here. But uh, I think we got another phone caller. We do. In. We got another caller in here. Somebody from Aurora, it seems like. Hello, caller. Where are you listening from? I'm listening from Aurora. Oh. You are correct. Oh. <laughs> Say again. I, well, I, I'm, I was just calling in just to see if you guys had any hot deals for the Joliet, um, the Joliet or Aurora, Naperville area. Yeah. Are you looking for... Um, uh, for family fun, yeah. For kids, uh, my wife. Even if, even if you know what, um, or even something that we can do a little short staycation, maybe a little bit further out, anywhere. Yeah. Um, do you guys have plans? Two to four for, hours away. Um, well, first off, where, where are you listening from? So, uh, um, I'm listening from Aurora right now. Oh, and awesome. So I, well, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not listening. I'm just well acquainted with uh, with the show. Oh. I was looking online. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Let me call in and see. Yeah, well, thank you for calling uh, so in. I live um, in Joliet. My yeah. my wife, me, my wife and kids, my, my parents have been longtime uh, listeners, shoppers, my siblings, nieces, cousins, like uh, just tons of us. We when love you, it. When you listen, do you listen on the app? Do you listen on on uh, the regular AM? What do you what do you listen to? The app. Oh, okay. The oh, app. Great. If I'm great. listening, it, it'll definitely be on the app. Great. Yeah, Juliet's just on the I know. edge. It can be of, at the scratchy end. We've got. Yeah. Um, and don't forget, subscribe to our WRMN station. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. And and sir, so what are you guys doing for um uh, for Easter? Are you guys have any plans or anything like that for maybe Saturday or so? For Saturday, I don't yeah. believe we have any plans. So no. th there's there's some great. Um, Easter uh, things that are out there right now. Um, I believe the Fox River Trolley is having a... Uh, going to be back on the air at about noon or so. And we're going to do the radio shopping show a little bit more proper. I'm not logged into the system right now. You're listening to the morning show. But if okay. you give me a call back around noon, what I'll do is I'll get you hooked up with that. Okay. The Fox River Trolley sounds... Have you ever been, have you ever been down there? Um, I can't, I've been on parts of the Fox River where, uh, it's out a little bit further west, I believe it was, where we were in, shoot, uh, just past Yorkville. Oh, this mm -hmm. is, this is just at the very south end of South Elgin on Route yep. 31. Oh, yep. okay. Oh, yep. and okay. it's, it's such a great time. It is. Um, they'll be able to take your kids out to the actual bunny side of it, ride the train for a little bit. I think it's a full hour and a half long. Um, and um, we've got uh, tickets for that as well that are easily half off. I think it's a thirty dollar value that you can get for sixteen bucks. Okay. Yeah. Is so it, call in good. again at, at noon or so, and I'll help you out through that. And, and there's one more. Thing. Okay. Uh, about it was it a week ago? You just mm -hmm. had the gentleman from Aurora. Do you remember their website by chance? Yeah. The um, uh, the city of Aurora. City of Aurora. Um, I believe it is Aurora dot I L dot org. Mm -hmm. I believe is, is the city of Aurora site. is yep. the municipal site there. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of things to do in Aurora as well. And then um, what I'll do as well, sir, is I'll do some research before we kick off at the noon show. And um, and I'll see if I can find a, uh, a package or so for you. Okay. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. You have a great day. Thanks for thinking of us. You got it. Okay. 
Yep, and th and that's part of it. Is is part of being um, here with the station is that's we are the information hub. Um, the, eventually, I'd like to get a um, an emergency services list as well, where somebody can call in and say, "Hey, I'm having trouble with housing. Who do I call? Hey, I I, I just cannot seem to feed my family this week. Where do I go? Right. And that's really where I would like to get the um, the station up to is. <laughs> Just a resource, a resource. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In fact, Marky, uh, Marky Bean gives his time mm -hmm. to the different shelters. He does. And I know he distributes food at several of them. He does. Our parish does the same thing on Thursdays. But yeah, that's this is what we want to be. We want to be able to be your source. If you have a question, let us be the three one one for you. I know mm -hmm. Elgin has one of those. Yeah. And uh, and and, they, and speaking about Elgin, you know they've been very good with us. Um, we had a little delay. I tried to get some permits, but as it worked out, uh, they've allowed us to continue our, our construction, which was, again, putting everybody on the main floor. And we've had nothing but support, nothing but support from mm -hmm. everybody in the community. That uh, I talked about Sam's Club before. Um, they helped us out. We were needing some boxes. And I went online, and I got the wrong price. I mean, it was like eight dollars more inside the store, mm -hmm. and the nice ladies, uh, Kathy and I think it was Julie, they were able to honor that discounted price, mm -hmm. and they welcomed us very nicely. And we're getting a new face here at WRMN as well, and you've got a couple people that are helping us with that too. Yeah, absolutely, we have so many so many different things coming in. We have uh, another uh, cool interview that's going to be coming up this week. Willie's at Grace. It's a restaurant. Uh, I don't even know the name of the street. It's on Walnut Avenue. Thank mm -hmm. you. It's it's uh, it's where Mary, uh, me and Larry met, ironically Saturday, just by accident. Right. Probably my my favorite restaurant in town, and everybody is welcoming. Mm -hmm. Willie is actually the former chef of the old uh, restaurant, but they have done a renovation in there that's out of this world, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a nice family business. And they're going to come in and tell us a little bit more about that as we go along. It's, it's the greasy spoon without the grease. Are they going to bring the any? Place, do you right? think they'll bring any samples? I could well, make time, Dean. I could make time. <laughs> I, I think we're going to twist some arms because everything there is good. Everything, it is good. Uh, You're right. Really, and we've had a lot of good partners. Uh, Sonar is talking about our uh, us being the achievers. We are. We're getting business cards, and there's a company in town that responds to mailroom, Scott happens to be the owner and the whole staff one's nicer than the other instead of me going in there and him trying to upsell me this that or the other thing he wants to know what our needs are mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people we just did a ribbon cutting at 360 yeah we did our out to lunch and and we plan on using those uh folks as well there's a lot of businesses within the fox river valley that we want to have opportunity to use, and we want to promote you. We want to let everybody know that you're out there. So please, keep keep those calls coming in. Let us know what you can do. Let us know what you have available. And uh, we're going to do our best to pull all of this together, as this is going to be. We are we know we're the talk of the town, mm -hmm. but we want to just not have that as a tagline. We want people to actually feel that in their heart. There it is. And I, and I think we're getting there little by little. Well, fellas, I am still on a hunt. I still have something that I haven't been able to find necessarily around here. You may be talking to the right people. Oh, I, that's that's it. I, I hope be. so. I hope so. And if not, I've got this amazing blowtorch that reaches all the way out to Joliet. Oh. And hopefully somebody could give me a, a call about it. Yes. Um, and anytime, Studio 14, 847-931-1410. Uh, eight four seven nine three one fourteen ten again. But my search, my scavenger hunt, best Guinness and Reuben. Where do I go? Oh, I don't know. Where do I go? Guinness, Guinness and a Reuben. Manny's. We, we, you're Manny's? not going to get a, a Guinness, uh -huh. uh, but I'll tell I you what, the own. best Reuben is Manny's. <laughs> George Rollinson will tell you that. We've been okay. there several times. Uh, sandwich, sandwich, and beer combo. What's really? what's the best one we See, go to? See, I can't to? do beer and eat. Okay, fair I'm, enough. I'm not a beer. I'll give you that one. I'm, 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 a, I'm like a one-trick pony. <laughs> you know, what's, the what's the name of the place across from 
Willie's and Grace. Uh, it's a walnut speakeasy. Yeah, that Didn't one was a great one. Didn't they have a Reuben in there? I think I they might have had probably it. Do. Yeah, I, I don't know it. they got the Guinness in there. Yeah, sure, well, check one check mark. We'll have yeah, to check I mean, the other one. The worst thing that happens is you have to try a few. That's what I mean. That's the best part about the scavenger hunt. <laughs> exactly <on>. right. Yep. <laughs> I thought Sodar was really enjoying the sandwich because he had foam all old. over his beard, <laughs> yeah. but I realized it was from the Guinness <laughs> beer. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah, we had a nice dinner there. That I've night. never had... I think there's a lot of decent sandwiches uh-huh. in Elgin. I just can't think. Nothing leaps in my head say, mm-hmm. you have to do... We used to go to a place on a old Route 53 in Itasca that I can't think what the name was. They had like an open face, Reuben. Okay. Excellent. Just yeah, excellent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and I know we've eaten over at the Blue Box a few times. That's yeah. a really good place. And they'll make you a special sandwich, as mm. they do for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't like all that extra stuff on it. Really? Mm. They made me a nice ham and cheese, easy lettuce, easy mayo, and they toasted the bread, too. There yeah. you go. Excellent. Those are great Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great places oh, around yeah. here. Now, yeah. you guys said the um, uh, Willie's is, is is the way to go. That's but my favorite. That's, that's, great, that's the breakfast. It's a great, but I've had lunches there. Okay. They have lunch specials every day along okay. with sandwiches. It's just a good place. Okay, it's, it's 2 o'clock. Willie's is closed. Where are you going? You're hungry. Yeah, I know. What, what, where, where are you going? going? So that's kind of my downfall. I don't have a lot of, a lot of dinner places okay. now. I, I just don't. Uh, well, Stanley's, people like Stanley's <laughs> just made a change. Okay. Yeah. Now they're Mexican. What's he had McLean? El Flaco. Yeah. Okay. I hope that's, I hope, you know, when you're it's spouting it's off, I hope that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it right there. Um, any uh, any hopes, any hopes that you guys have for the uh, for the station? Is there anything that you, any achievements? Let's get some some KPIs, some some key point uh, indicators. You go first, Larry. Go ahead. Well, Let's hear. first of all, and, and you guys have mentioned it before, and I know Mark has mentioned it before. WRMN was was like watching an old movie where someone's like lost in the desert and they've walked a while and then they've crawled a while and you're not sure they're ever going to get to the they're going to get to the watering hole we were crawling we were crawling my hope is that that doesn't happen to us again that's my hope. And, I, you know, I always think about that when you solicit, what do you see change? I know people don't like change. Mm-hmm. But people have to think outside what we were doing because it wasn't doing. Yeah. I mean, it's okay to want to hold on to. I have comfy shoes I don't want to let go. Mm-hmm. But, but you also have to think, what does it take to sustain it? Yep. And so that's the thing. I hope it's, I hope it's sustainable. It's, it's a great part of my life. I appreciate you guys coming in and letting me hang out. I, I appreciate Bill when he had it. I appreciate Rick mm-hmm. Jekyll letting me come. It's uh, the best of two worlds for me. So anyway, I, a sustainable radio station that serves the people. Mm-hmm. That's what I'd like. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that, that has to be my point. We don't want to be just a flash in the pan. We don't want to just come up with some, you know, fancy pens that say WRMN or mm-hmm. dumb little beer can holders or whatever koozies i don't know what you call them i never use them we want to be here for the information we want to be here for the quality we want to make sure that everybody knows wrmn is welcome to everybody and that means Mm -hmm. everybody we're talking about the room right next to us it's going to be the biggest green room you ever saw Mm -hmm. we're going to have it set up where we can do demonstrations you have a cooking demonstrations a craft demonstration or maybe a live band we're going to be able to you know it'll be handicap accessible so everybody is welcome here where there's no Mm -hmm. limitations to who's welcome at our station and this is our station you're not going to hear i me us unless it's a responsibility that we have to own Mm -hmm. for something you know we've done wrong or took a misstep yeah then then i'll take the responsibility Along with Sonar, of course. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take that responsibility. But we want to be here for you. We want you to feel comfortable. And get comfortable. Ring up this phone line. I mean, we're asking you guys to call us. I know we have people listening to the radio. Uh, should I call in? We, we, we met somebody on Saturday, a nice older woman. She said, oh, I'm not much on calling, and you're not going to want to hear what I have to say. <laughs> and that's not true. Whatever it is you have to say, it's important. If it's mm-hmm. important to one person, 
it's important to all of us. Yep, and we talked about um, Larry and I just just at the beginning of this of the evolution of media, the change of of things, and it's getting to the point now where it's hyper local is is the success. And what other way can you be hyper local than literally being in the a public green room right next door to the radio station? Right, right. You cannot get more local than that. We'll be able to grab a microphone and go over there next door into the Redemption Center, into the uh, public green room, and literally interview you right there. Yeah. What do you want to say? What do you have for your message? And invite us to our Out to Lunch segment. Mm-hmm. We've got... How many different restaurants? It doesn't have to be a restaurant. Any business that you have, you want to promote, invite us. We'll be there. You're in the Fox River Valley. We're going to come and see you. Make the phone call. Our phone number is on the bottom of the screen. Uh, Sonar could read off to you the phone 847-931-1410. number. 847-931-1410. we got uh, two minutes left, fellas. Any, any last words? Oh, I just, I'm glad Larry stayed along with us. Oh. I'm, for real. The, the knowledge that Larry has, <laughs> we're trying to talk him into putting his own show on over here. And uh, just everybody together, the people that have been here in the past, we applaud them and thank them. Marky mm-hmm. B for putting out a great show every morning. I mean, that takes a lot of talent. Oh, yeah. I mean, to prepare for these shows. You know, I was going to do the weather. I was going to do this. I had so many things I had ready to put on but you know what this time goes fast you know mm-hmm. you watch a tv program you think you're watching an hour well, what's a what's a television program 40 minutes yeah 35 minutes yeah you're only by getting time 45 you, out of yeah, content by the time you're taking out the commercials so our time is short so yeah. and we got people going by saying no hello. it's it's carol Gieske coming in oh, for hello. the chamber absolutely the chamber. Yeah. we've She's got chamber up. chat coming yes. in um, right after this, right after the news. I appreciate you guys being oh, in here. Well, with thanks me for having me in, guys. Thank thanks yeah. for having Larry, me Larry, thanks for coming in. Oh, you bet. Sonar, you lead us so well. We appreciate it. Well, I try. I try. I do I do what I can, and um, we all love it, right? We, we Otherwise, do. we wouldn't be here. That's true. It's you our passion. Thanks, You wouldn't everybody. get up this early. You wouldn't watch us this uh, this early, and um, you surely wouldn't participate if, uh, uh, if you didn't like us, or at least you didn't have the hope that we would eventually uh, uh, entertain you. But we appreciate you. Uh, you're listening to WRMN 1410, the voice of the valley, the talk of the town, the home of radio shopping. Columbia College of Missouri Elgin Campus is intent in their commitment to open doors and support those who strive for excellence. Too many people have been made to feel that higher education isn't a place for them, that it is someone else's dream. But Columbia College of Missouri has changed all that. With individualized attention and ongoing support, Columbia College knows a future built by you is a future built for you. Columbia College of Missouri Elgin Campus, your new starts now. Visit ccis.edu. Hailing from Tanzania, you'll be thrilled to see the Zuzu African Acrobats celebrate the 2,000-year-old Bantu culture of East Africa. The Zuzu Acrobats have performed on America's Got Talent, and you can see their incredible acrobatics and energizing African drumming, singing, and dancing this Saturday at 4 at the Egyptian Theater in DeKalb. Each performance has incredible gravity-defying stunts while displaying the grace, beauty, and strength of the African culture. Visit EgyptianTheater.org. Your hometown radio station since 1949. We are WRMN AM 1410 Elgin time, 9 o'clock. With your AM 1410 WRMN News Flash, I'm Sean Kernan. Brought to you by Sky Rizzi. Explore proven results with Sky Rizzi. A child missing from South Elgin has been found safe after six years. Kayla Unbahan has been located alive at Asheville, North Carolina. Her mother, Heather Unbahan, standing accused of child abduction following a custody loss. The pair were identified by an employee of a secondhand clothing store who remembered them from a feature on Unsolved Mysteries. Kane County State's Attorney Jamie L. Mosser has reported that the election 
election complaint hotline received five calls during the general primary election day voting. Three were related to electioneering, one was about privacy during a voter registration, and the last one dealt with a missing race due to a boundary error. In a newly announced commercial property deal, a 53,000 square foot warehouse lease has been negotiated by Lee and Associates on behalf of Bullfrog International. A luxury hot tub designer and manufacturer now expands its presence in Elgin at 1320 Gateway Drive. With your AM 1410 WRMN News Flash, I'm Sean Kernan. Get the one and done you want for your dog's monthly protection. Next Guard Plus, a Foxalonor, Moxidectin, and Pyrantal chewable tablets. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious beef flavored soft chew. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting a preventive. Ask your vet about Next Guard Plus chews. Progressive asks, what do a late night pizza craving? Pizza place. Can I get one large pepperoni pizza? A newly licensed teen delivery driver. A guaranteed delivery time or it's free offer. And your front fence have in common? Uh oh. That's my fence! They can turn your stomach upside down in under 30 minutes. I'm still getting a tip, right? Bundle your home and auto with Progressive for great savings and round the clock protection. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states or situations. Golden Corral Buffet and Grill, 154 Gary Avenue in Bloomingdale is open. Golden Corral's legendary Endless Buffet has a variety of delicious favorites and new menu offerings for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Guests can choose from over 150 items, including grilled-to-order sirloin, pork, seafood, as well as old favorites like fried chicken, meatloaf, and mac and cheese. Golden Corral is the only one for everyone. Visit goldencorral.com. If you're not sure what to have for dinner, the Seven Dwarfs Restaurant on the corner of Roosevelt and President in Wheaton has you covered. Their huge menu is sure to satisfy everyone. Enjoy the diner-styled atmosphere that's been serving up tasty food since the 50s. The Seven Dwarfs has lively decor and delicious entrees. They offer a hearty breakfast, plus three or four lunch specials daily. For dinner, it's all-you-can-eat fish on Fridays. And remember to try their barbecue ribs. Visit SevenDwarfsRestaurant.com today. Progressive presents the Sports Flash on News Talk Radio 1410 WRMN. NCAA men's hoops this Thursday, Sweet 16, East Regional, third seed Illinois battle, second seed Iowa State. The Cubs are set for opening day. They made some roster moves on Monday. Outfielder Alexander Canario, right-hander Hayden Wesneski option to AAA Iowa. The team also released catcher Jorge Alfaro. The Wizards beat the Bulls 107-105 to last night. DeMar DeRozan 27 points in the loss. Chicago drops to 34-38. and For Washington, it was their season high, third straight win. The Wizards just 14 and 58 on the season. 8 and 30 away from home. Chicago's lost three in a row. They're ninth in the East. A game and a half ahead of Atlanta. NHL, the Blackhawks host the Flames tonight. Puck drop at 7.30 United Center. Chicago already eliminated from playoff contention. They're coming off a 5-4 victory on the road at San Jose. Bundle auto and home, renters or condo and save with Progressive. I'm Chuck Sanders on News Talk Radio 1410 WRMN. Taco Bell just dropped the new Cravings value menu. Now you can get 10 items for $3 or less, which means you can get the food you want for the price you want. It's almost like you can have your cake and eat it too. But in this case, it's a double stack taco from the new Cravings value menu. So basically, you can have your double stack taco and eat it too, which is a lot crunchier than cake. The new Cravings value menu is here. Get it at Taco Bell today. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Contact store for price and participation, which vary. Tax extra. And now Martha Stewart for Skechers. When I make a dish or embark on a craft project, I always use the finest, most fabulous ingredients and materials. Which is why, when it comes to footwear, I love Skechers. Because Skechers is the comfort technology company and uses the most luxurious, innovative materials and designs to make wondrously comfortable footwear with all the fits and features like Arch Fit and Skechers' world-famous air-cooled memory foam. It's Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. No matter the time of the day, WRMN 1410 AM is your platform to voice your views, share your stories, and connect with the Valley like never before. We're more than just radio. We're a community conversation that's always live, always local, and always looking for your input. Want to chime in on the drive time deal with Matt McNeil? Got a hot tip for first shift with Marky B? Or maybe you've got a question for a one-on-one with Leah. Now's the time to make your voice heard by calling Studio 14 at 847-931-1410. 
847-931-1410. That's 847-931-1410. You can join in the dialogue from wherever you are by commenting on our YouTube live streams at WRMN Radio. Hit the subscribe button to get notified when we go live and bring your comments to the table. It's easy, it's fun, and hey, it's what neighbors do. We talk, we listen, we engage. You're not just the audience, you're part of the show. Call in, comment, and let's make radio interactive. WRMN 1410 AM, where your words are part of our wavelength. Welcome back to WRMN 1410. Um, I'm sorry you're not hearing the normal voice. That's okay. I'll do my best. My name is Dennis Sonar Green. I am carrying you through the rest of this hour, but not alone. Uh, Carol is with me from the Chamber Chat. Thank you very much, madam, for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me here, Dennis. Um, This is a regular uh, occurring show. Can you just give us a real quick um, overview of what we're doing today? I absolutely can, but first I'd like to offer my congratulations and thank you for your ownership and your new direction with the station. We are really looking forward to working with you. There are so many exciting stories of businesses and Mm -hmm. people who are uh, in business in the greater Elgin area that we're glad to work with you in any way that we can. Absolutely. No, and that's and that's the goal of it is to bring more um, more people in, get more voices, yeah. more more messaging out there, not just uh, listeners, but also the information for journalists and businesses and community organizations. And that's exactly where the chamber comes in as well in that same mindset. It is, absolutely. We represent a lot of businesses in the greater Elgin area, primarily Elgin and South Elgin, about 70% of our our businesses are located in those areas but we do have 30 percent all around this area so you are a, a, a destination for information mark's been so good to us over the years hosting us and and uh, we're just so excited about your leadership and where you'll take this and and we'll be glad to work with you in any way that we can to connect you with folks that you want to talk with and and so today i'm really pleased to have Oh, this is wonderful. Matt Klein, Klein's Quality Produce. So, Matt, thanks for joining me this morning. Well, thank you, Carol and Dennis. Thank you for uh, inviting me here. Well, this is, uh, well, I'm sure it's not what I would call your busy season, but I wonder, do you call this your busy season? Well, it's beginning to be. Right now we are in the uh, preparations for uh, spring planting, which... Uh, right now, it's mainly the focus is on our uh, flowering bedding plants. So we're busy in the greenhouse. Well, this is a, a great story, a family story, a family business. We're very excited to have Matt here with us for the first time. In a little bit, Denise Raleigh with the Gail Borden Public Library will also be joining uh, our uh, radio broadcast this morning. Denise is going to talk about the library's 150th anniversary. So we just have a full slate of conversation going on. I'll share a little bit about what's happening with our Chamber of Commerce as well. So uh, very much uh, very excited to listen this morning with um, uh, on YouTube to you, Dennis, and yeah. uh, that's a new format that started with your show. Yeah, your yeah, we're trying to get a uh, a bit more of a facelift for everything. Um, we are a media production company. Why wouldn't we have the same things that most media production <laughs> companies have? Um, and I I try to lean into that multi format approach because just like you as business owners as well, you don't just get billboards. You don't just uh, put on events. Uh, you also have business cards and flyers and um, all of the different media that you use to mm-hmm. promote your business. So why wouldn't we do the same thing as an actual media company? Mm-hmm. So that's where we leaned on to this. So that way you can also take this with you, Mr. Klein, and you can point people this direction and people get to know a little bit more about you. Um, and by all means, we want to get people into your into your shop, but at least this right. way we can we can draw them over. Yes, thank you. So, so Matt, uh, well, if you're from the Elgin area and been around for a little bit, you obviously know Klein's Quality Produce. Matt, you've got two farm stands. Can you tell us about those locations? Yes, so this will be our 58th year in Elgin. Uh, My grandfather and grandmother, George and Phyllis Klein, 
were kind of the starters of it. My, my dad, Randy, and my mom, Judy, really uh, built the business here, and it was all based on sweet corn and um, summertime produce stands. So we're, we've gotten a little more than that over the last few years. A little more than that. Well, we're, <laughs> we went from just raising vegetables on our farm in Burlington to uh, raising bedding plants and uh, on our farm, too. So that's, that's what we're in the middle of right now. So you have, when production's at its height, you open your Lillian Street location. Is that right? Correct. And, yeah. We're and that's, at, yeah, please do. We're at 1175 Lillian Street. Um, we'll be open around April 20th is our goal. Usually it kind of depends on the weather and how the plants are looking. Mm -hmm. And our, our other location is west of town uh, off of Plank Road in Udina. In Udina. Which is still Elgin, but we still call it Udina. Udina, right. So that is, uh, that is right at the, the Y, if you will, how I describe that intersection. If you come up to the Route 20 yes. stoplights, you can go straight onto 20, or you can head over to the, the left to, towards Russell Road, and you're nestled right in between them by the fire station. Yes, we are. We have a, it's a nice little neighborhood. There's the Plank Road tap room out there and, and uh, our stand, and it's kind of a growing little area. It is. You're making a lot of changes out there. You you started at that location, was it two years ago? Yeah, we officially opened that location um, in 2020, and then we completely moved from our old location, which was just a few hundred feet west or east of there, and we moved completely moved there in uh, 2022. All right. So it started as sweet corn, and you were a destination for sweet corn, clearly uh, for... Uh, the community and you have really just expanded quite significantly so can you talk a little bit about that going into bedding plants and what you need by way of staffing how all this comes together because you're a family business right yeah we I, I grew up uh, riding in the truck with my dad to the stands delivering produce and uh, always loved the, being on the farm and then went went off to college at the University of Illinois where I met my lovely wife Chris and she has uh, been very instrumental in helping make the change, not necessarily the change, but the addition mm -hmm. of, of bedding plants to our operation. She, she grew up in Addison, Illinois. We met at U of I, and we're in the horticulture club together, and, and uh, the rest, I guess, is history. But <laughs> So when I returned, when we both uh, graduated, returned from college, got married, and my dad encouraged us to use our current markets that we hadn't been open but only from july through october so he encouraged us to um actually open a little earlier in the season and use our degrees to raise bedding plants and and that that worked out well it, it's uh we're not a huge farm so to add family members, every family member that gets added to the farm kind of needs to bring their own part, <laughs> you know, bring, bring some weight, some skin in the game, so to speak. There you go. So that's worked out well. So Matt, when you were at college, was it your intent to come back and help out at the farm or did you think you'd be doing something different? I didn't, I wasn't really sure at first. I just felt like I needed to get away from my small town mm -hmm. for a while and but going through and meeting people in college in the agriculture industry i realized that i knew where i wanted to be i wanted to be back on the farm mm -hmm. so a farm is is a concept uh, that kids are growing up nowadays they don't even understand what that is i mean they don't understand that all goes into it so you own a lot of acreage in udina and or to the west in burlington um and you're yes. growing what? Yeah. Well, we, we grow a full line of produce that, that we can grow here in Illinois. Sweet corn is our main item. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, cucumbers, tomatoes. We can even grow watermelons and, and cantaloupes. Uh, a few potatoes. So we try to have as much of our own produce at our markets as we can. In fact, any vegetables that are grown here are our own. 
So are. sometimes we'll purchase in things like peaches, Illinois peaches, and some local fruit. But we try to maintain everything fresh. We harvest on a daily basis. Our sweet corn is always picked that, that morning that you get it. And that's one thing that keeps us a little, our product fresher. Mm-hmm. And unless you're growing it and selling it yourself, as other farm markets do, you, you won't buy a corn that's picked that day in the grocery store. Very unusual, right? So. That's nice. Okay, so how many folks are uh, family members that are working with you at this point in time? What's the next generation? Your kiddos? I have three boys, and uh, my twins are 31, and they are both working on the farm, uh, some more than others. So, so the three of them, two of them have uh, other jobs off the farm but are always engaged. Uh, Alex is our oldest twin, and he's, he's around the farm on a daily basis. And then I have uh, Sam, and uh, Jonathan is our youngest, who is involved in the grain farming. Sam and Jonathan are involved uh, in keeping the grain end of it up, and that helps with our rotation of our crops on our farm. So much. I don't know. What do you think? There's, there's so much to know about a farm. It's oh, hard absolutely. To even... And, and the, what's great about it, it, like you said, the education um, aspect of it. A lot of people just don't know that w- they go to the grocery store, get the, get the produce and go. How has the shift changed in your mind with the industry where it's moved from we have to send it to a distributor as opposed to direct to table? Um, has the shift happened and that's why you're able to have the two markets that you have right now? Yeah, we, we, that's, that, that's correct. We've always had our own retail market. Okay. So we really don't, haven't changed our business model too much. But there is a focus on uh, and the wholesale distribution pros just simply because of the volume that's necessary to, to feed you know, millions and millions of people. Um, and to, to get that volume, you need large growers you know, that have hundreds of acres of peppers. Uh, I have two acres of peppers and I can't compete, you know, on a wholesale level, even if I tried, mm-hmm. but that's not my goal. My goal is to, is to provide fresh, healthy product to local customers. And there's, and that's goes for every farm market in the area and other areas that's that's what they're striving to do do you have any restaurants that you currently service as well i mean i know you've got it open to the public but do you have any direct um buyers for anybody who is looking for fresh ingredients there's a few in burlington that that we serve but uh we've mainly concentrated on our own retail but we're looking into that and i'm always talking to restaurants that that i um that's partake great. of you know yeah. and, and uh, always interested in talking to people mm-hmm. about that yeah the, the, the whole uh, you know we grow this right <laughs> yeah you know, you know, right. I, I grow this right <laughs> yeah how about a tomato with some flavor exactly. i have them at my farm <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that is really interesting so um when you started when you and chris came back to the farm there were of course many more farms around this area how about now what what's the status with family-owned farms in this area well there's still quite a most most all farms are family owned but the the profitability is getting to be very the margins are very thin Mm -hmm. in farming and so uh size does kind of take into effect where the uh, you know economies of scale if you can afford to scale up it's generally a little more profitable so we're we're kind of in the middle of we do grow some some grain crops for a rotation but in the vegetable part of it we have to focus on quality and 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 profitability you have to be profitable to keep it in the family you know my son Alex and his wife Krista are are the involved on a daily basis Krista managing our one market so they're learning about that part of it and and uh, one thing I regret and not in college in college is not taking enough business classes because <laughs> mm-hmm. that 
that will really applies to everything. So you still have to make a profit, but we want to do it in a way that we can serve healthy food to local people. Mm -hmm. So what about the, the cost of your um, seeds that you're buying, for instance? All of that continues to rise as you're Correct. Each coming, coming upon each planting season? Especially up until this year. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen price increases really in this season too much. Um, but the previous two or three, yeah, drastically. And that all has to come into play. Mm -hmm. so. And so as we look forward to sweet corn, this is uh, March, April, May, June, July. So we're four months away from you delivering that first uh, set of uh, ears on our table. Uh, are you, do you stay with the same uh, quality product that you've used before? Do you change as you look into the next growing season? We grow, uh, well, I'll tell you, we, we sample corn at our house, our dinner table, every night. Uh -huh. <laughs> so once we start that season, we check on different varieties. Anything new coming out, we might plant a little bit. And, but we eat everything that we grow. and we, It's because our goal is for it to taste good. Mm -hmm. And if it tastes good, then, then you'll want you know, to feed your bodies those mm -hmm. healthy vegetables. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we will be planting our first corn probably as soon as the ground is fit, usually mid-April if, we're, if mm -hmm. we're lucky. And right now we actually have our broccoli and lettuce plants in the greenhouse. They're about two weeks from being planted. So mm -hmm. we're, we're thankful for the rain that's come. Yeah. But eventually it'll need to dry out so we can get in the field so that is interesting because of all businesses you're impacted most by the weather mm -hmm. so yes. what have we seen now we've seen about a foot less of snow this season what does that mean for you and your crops out in the field well since it's, it hasn't been a very sustained cold we will have some insect issues this year for sure uh it was glad to see i'm thankful for the moisture because like you say, we were very low on snow. So if we've got, if this would have all been snow, we'd have been two or three feet under snow. So it, it, it is good that we're getting this replenishing because it was looking fairly dry out there a month ago. Mm -hmm. so. And, and so you talked about when your crops are going into the ground and that's not always a set date, but like, Correct. like you were alluding to mm -hmm. is, is back to it. Um, where do you lean on tradition versus the new information and new technologies? Is the is the old farmer's almanac still uh, uh, well, still that, viable? That, that reminds me of an interesting story. I my um, my brother and I were um, talking to my dad, and this was right after I got out of college, and my dad was ready to go plant some sweet corn and. I said, Dad, I've been learning about these growing degree days where you, you look at the we you look at how many, how warm the temperature's been over a certain amount of time, and we were trying to figure out, you know, do we, how much corn do we want to plant for this next planting? Because we have to plant for every five days or so, so we get the fresh corn ev all during the season. Mm -hmm. And he said, Well, you guys. You guys sit here and figure that out, and I'll go out and plant a couple rounds of corn. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So it's kind of bold. I, I, I still use my dad's old seat of the pants method, mm -hmm. but we take good notes every year for what corn is mature and what date, and you know the planting date versus harvest date. So mm -hmm. it's it's never it's not an exact science, but we get it as close as we can. There you go. So how many hands are out in your field picking, as you say, you're picking every day, the corn is fresh, you're picking all of your produce on a regular basis. You, you and Chris and your, your kids aren't the only ones that are out there. Correct. We have a crew of about 10. 10, wow. And we hand harvest, usually hand harvest most of the corn. Uh, we do have a machine that does an excellent job, uh, a very gentle machine. And uh, that we went to because of labor shortages. But generally, uh, when there's any marginal conditions, you have to hand harvest anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of our, most, all of our produce is hand harvested. So you literally are walking the fields and 
yes. picking the the fresh produce to get it to your two stands. That's remarkable. And we couldn't do it without a crew that size. We, mm -hmm. just, we would have to do something else. And are some of these folks coming back to you? Do they are you they regular? We've folks had with you? some of the same uh, families since uh, the early 1980s. Oh, that's so wonderful. We're into the third generation. Oh gosh, that is really great. It's Man. a family farm all around. Yeah, multiple I would say. Families. Absolutely. I would say. Well, Dennis, we're going to take a break if yeah, that's all right with absolutely. you, and we're going to come back and talk more with Matt Klein of Klein's Quality Produce. There goes Denise. Let the Triple cover. Berry Cafe yeah, of Crystal Lake I'm offers incredible breakfast and lunch options for you, and now the coffee bar is open for you to enjoy. Stop in and enjoy a relaxing cup of coffee in a peaceful setting. And if you're hungry, the Triple Berry Cafe is ready to provide you with homemade goodness. That's enjoy right, omelets, Denise. skillets, Eat pancakes, Dennis. crepes, waffles, Dennis and much more for breakfast. Stop in at the, the Triple Berry station. Cafe for lunch and, and enjoy Matt signature Curry sandwiches, burgers, wraps, salads, Denise and healthy Raleigh options are available as well. Triple Berry Cafe, just off Randall Road. Thanks. And Crystal Lake, really now with a coffee bar. Farm, God, man, Hop I don't on know how you over guys to Lamb's it. Farm in you, Libertyville for a delicious there? bunny brunch on Friday, March 29th, or Saturday, March 30th. Okay. Enjoy oh, a delicious gosh. buffet oh, at the Magnolia try. Cafe and Bakery. Then yeah. take a walk over to the Bunny Patch in the Visitor Center for crafts and a special visit with the Easter Bunny. Call the Magnolia Cafe and Bakery at Lamb's Farm for reservations for the Bunny Brunch at 847-362-5050. Visit lambsfarm.org for more information. Hippity hop. Warm up this winter and introduce your friends to Vieter Coffee at the Food Hall in downtown Elgin. Vieter Coffee has a winter menu that includes six new coffee drinks with names like Little Wolf, Tartan Tonic, and Merry Mint Mocha. Plus, there's a whole new lineup of baked goods, too. Vieter Coffee mm, provides you with amazing great. flavors and customer service. Well, so relax and savor a that, cup in a place that offers a new yeah, level yeah, of coffee yeah, drinks and service yeah, okay. within a peaceful, relaxing space. Visit VieterCoffeeCart.com. Hit the open road and experience the fresh air of Wisconsin at the Grand Stay Hotel and Suites in Mount Horeb. This award-winning hotel is just outside Madison. Mount Horeb is known as the troll capital of the world. Families can go on a troll hunt through the historic downtown or check out Cave of the Mounds just minutes down the road. The Grand Stay offers a beautiful pool and a hot tub with year-round fun. Visit GrandStayMountHoreb.com today to schedule your visit. This is McGruff the Crime Dog, and I need you to help me take a bite out of crime. Counterfeit products are popping up everywhere. Fake sneakers, fake cosmetics, and even fake pills. Crooks are selling counterfeit versions of just about everything. Last year, billions of dollars worth of counterfeit products were sold in the U.S. Sure, it may seem like saving a few bucks on the things you want isn't a big deal, but counterfeits are usually made in unsafe conditions potentially using hazardous and even lethal ingredients that could harm you and others. And the money you've paid, it goes right into the hands of criminals and may support child labor, drugs, and even gangs. <sighs> Smells like big crime to me. So if you still think buying fake products is harmless, think again. And remember, if you don't know where the products came from, how could you know where the money goes? You're smart, buy smart. Go for real. Learn more at mcgruffpsa.org. This message is brought to you by the United States Patent and Trademark Office and the National Crime Prevention Council. Back to WRMN 1410, the voice of the valley, the talk of the town, the home of radio shopping. I know you're listening to a different voice today. My name is Dennis Sonar Green, but of course, we've got Carol here to drive the chamber chat. We really appreciate you doing this for us, ma'am. Well, I appreciate you giving us the time to talk about local business. It's oh, really important. Why not? So, it yeah. is, a, like you said, it is absolutely important. It is something that just anybody that has a community mindset should be encouraging more communication more voices more events more things to go out and do because mm -hmm. how much of you are you our community from sitting on my couch the entire time Very, there <laughs> how, you go. how involved in the community <laughs> yep. am i there you go well we really uh, we've got a, a wonderful area lots of uh, lots of events going on all of the time uh, we just had our annual meeting last week i want to take just a moment to celebrate some of the uh, recognition that we 
we uh, did as a part of our annual meeting. We uh, gave out a number of awards. Volunteer of the Year went to Lisa Barron, who's Director of Human Resources at Elgin Sweeper Company. We appreciated her leadership in our workforce development and our Human Resources Committee. That committee started uh, meeting the, uh, <coughs> I think it was the second or third week of COVID. So we pulled together one of our first virtual meetings at that point in time, mm -hmm. Dennis, which was a learning experience for us. But our team, Terry Gajewski, Tony Lusenko, and Yesenia Sanchez were just really uh, so wonderful in helping pull that together. We met with these human resource people every other week virtually because they were the ones that were working with essential employees and were saying, hey, this works for my business. You might want to try it. And someone mm -hmm. would say, I tried this and it was disastrous. Don't go down that road. <laughs> so a lot of sharing about what to do with the teams as uh, we went through COVID and that turned into a monthly meeting. So we meet with oh, up to 65 human resource directors from around the area. Tony, my colleague, is the one that coordinates that event and it represents about 30,000 employees of the 60,000 here in the Elgin area. So Lisa ran that and uh, we appreciate what she, done, and she has done with us and uh, we wish her well as she just got a promotion as happens with our volunteer base so often. Lisa has just been promoted to the Vice President of Human Resources for her Federal Signal, which owns Elgin Sweeper Company. So wow. we'll be uh, losing Lisa to her corporate job, but just very excited for her. Recognized Dr. Risa Jones. Many people know Risa with Hamilton Wings and her own evaluation company. But Risa has started a, 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 a new committee with us, the um, Bridges Committee, and we'll be doing a Black Business Expo next month, and she's leading that. So we wanted to say thank you for her role in that. We also, uh, in, you were talking a little bit earlier, Matt, about business. SCORE Vox Valley is a partner with us. SCORE is a group of um, uh, resources with about 50 local mentors who give their time and their expertise to other businesses. So mm -hmm. for instance, I could call them and say, hey, meet with Matt. Matt's got an issue with you know, packaging or marketing mm -hmm. or something. And, and they'll have someone who spent 20, 30, 40 years in those worlds and come out and talk with me at it, no cost. So we appreciate all that Score Fox Valley has done with us. And they're such a wonderful resources to business. And then York Container was the other organization that we recognized for the innovative business of the year. York is a new, um, state-of-the-art packaging company, brown back box packaging, graphic packaging displays. So when we're walking down those grocery aisles and we see that display that we knock our cart into sometimes, <laughs> that's the kind of thing that they're doing. And they um, are they're incredibly successful. They built a 500,000 square foot uh, manufacturing plant here in Illinois, wow. here in Elgin. Uh, they came to us from Canada. They were looking at a number of locations around the country. My colleague Tony Lusenko and our city staff, our professional staff are really wonderful, uh, helped convince them that Elgin was the place that they wanted to be and they chose it and they are just um, working at full capacity right now with the latest and greatest state of the art and sustainable press that uh, that is available. So we wanted to recognize them and thank them for coming to Elgin and, and and, uh, and employing a number of people and, and hopefully expanding their business because it's going so well. So those are the folks that we were able to recognize last week as part of our annual meeting and thank them for what they, they do with us. So it seems like some great benefits uh, for the chamber membership that's, yeah. that's there. And, and like you were talking, uh, Matt, about how we can all use some business mm. <laughs> information. We and can. what better than people who've had the experience yeah. being that mentorship? You know, that's true, Dennis. And, and uh, there's not a person that we've met in, in this area that doesn't want a business to be successful. So we mm -hmm. just worked with uh, Sunshine's Cupcakery. We just did a ribbon cutting down there a couple of weeks ago. She's a cupcake shop. One of those stories that you start baking in your, your home and you grow that and grow that business and then you go to a commercial kitchen and you've outgrown that business so she's opened her first uh, bricks and mortar building and, and um, you know sells cupcakes and she uh, went came to us through our Elgin development group through Tony Lusenko and through a, a local bank Elgin State Bank and then we referred her to score and they helped her with her first location wow. for instance there was someone who's been in that industry for a long time could help her plan her footprint within that building plan uh, help her to plan how much she had to order i'm sure matt you deal with that all the time <laughs> with how many packets of seeds do i do or sure. pounds of seeds those kinds of things so that um, assistance was available through score so we are really appreciative of that 
So Denise Raleigh has joined us here as well this morning. Welcome, Denise. Thank you, and welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. Denise is the Division Chief with Public Relations and Development at Gail Borden Public Library. And talking about our celebration, you're, the day before, you had your 150th celebration down at the library. It was gigantic <laughs> and, and exciting and loud, and <laughs> there were so many people. It was really fun to be yeah, there. A little wanna, bit of chaos, though. It was a little bit of chaos, and we want to thank everyone who came to attend that momentous occasion. 150 years is something else. It is. And... Uh, I do apologize to people at the back. <laughs> I know, and Carol, I think you were one of those because when we announced Carol Gieske from the CEO of the Elgin Area Chamber of Commerce, all I saw was a hand. <laughs> like she was back there somewhere. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but uh, I was back with all the little kids looking at that cupcake table, Denise. Oh, I yeah. think that you were responsible we, for that one, we right? We had the cupcakes, we had the the bookmarks that mm -hmm. moved with, you know, the fireworks that went off on our bookmarks. Uh, so 150 years, and I was trying to, as I was arriving here, I was trying to think how many people, and it probably is millions, that have come through the door of the Gail Borden Public Library, and all the different people and all the different of cultures, of ages, it's been a fantastic ride, and uh, I think us, that are here working for the library at this time. It's really exciting to be in the in the 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 momentous time period is ours. So mm -hmm. we thank everyone who showed up for that, and we thank everyone who's they watched it online as well. It has been fantastic. That, that video has been watched thousands and thousands of times, and I, I, the amount of people that have congratulated the library is is fantastic. But again, our mission statement is we're fueled by the power of community because that is what makes this. Mm -hmm. And 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 you could it was so evident at that 150th celebration. Well, you could just see the excitement of people coming in through those doors into the rotunda and and getting through. Some of them wanted to get through and get their books and wanted no part of the celebration, and others were just very excited to be there. The the excitement on the kids' faces, I think, was what was so much fun, and that's probably because you've had display after display that has drawn so many people in. Matt, you've got grandkids. I'm sure they've been down to see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and and the other great displays that you've had. And Dennis, I don't know if you've heard about those kinds of things but the destination the library is a destination for our community you have how many people a day coming through there uh we're we had <clears throat> last uh tuesday we had 2600 and so our pre-pandemic uh again we just we want to make sure that we're having an impact and we you know we're prepaid the tax we're a lot of our bill is paid for by taxpayers so our thought is we want you to use us mm -hmm. so how we you know we try and attract people down with our our ever-changing exhibits but once someone is there it's our job to convert them to library users mm -hmm. you know use some of our and we have so many resources that the tax money has paid for and we have this fantastic staff that is there to connect folks to those resources mm -hmm. but it yeah the numbers are staggering. We're finally getting back to some pre-pandemic numbers. We have been number one on TripAdvisor for the place to visit for, for many, many years, but it is, it's a combination of a great staff and we keep things changing. You know, you never know what you're going to find there. And that's kind of our, the, the amazing part of this library is we're going to surprise you. So you have, you celebrated officially last week with 150th anniversary, but you're doing things all year long to celebrate. Is that right? Yes. On June 8th, we actually have a birthday party today for kids, mm. but it is totally booked out. Um, but we actually, on June 8th, we will have an old fashioned fair and kick off to summer reading. And we have, we'll have a carousel. We'll have all these old fashioned games. Uh, old-fashioned foods, and uh, we expect a huge attendance for that as well. And most of that, weather permitting, I'm knocking on linoleum, um, <laughs> will be outside so that we can accommodate the, the huge crowds that we anticipate for that. But it's all about bringing people back to the library. The pandemic was hard for everyone, including us, but we found out those safety drawers. Yeah, we do have the drive-ups that are very safe. We're very cherished during our COVID time period, but uh, 
we we want people to come back and and 150 years people have been finding us and the and the cool thing about and i don't know if dennis knows that you may know matt but mm -hmm. i know carol does we were the first community to vote to establish a public library wow. in 1872 oh, we did not open our doors until 1874 but we actually as soon as the illinois statute and this is after the chicago fire uh the uh, queen of england and her staff send books to chicago to replenish our libraries that we did not have mm -hmm. but that is when the illinois legislature passes the free public library act and this community voted first that we want a public library that's phenomenal isn't and, that cool and it shows in the in the history the 150 years that you you have of the spirit of why not why i mean it, it, you say well here's all of these books that we're that we're getting here why not have a public place that these books can be and even for the live streaming and the events that you guys are putting on you're more than just a depository of books you are an event center you are a uh, resource beyond just this is where we store the knowledge <laughs> let's use some of it why not use that and it's a really great spirit how do you guys continue to come up with something else of why not do this and why not do that well one thing that uh, is our community keeps changing we get different requests the first time we did a life side dinosaur exhibit and that was to create partnerships so it was very intentional and strategic like mm -hmm. we needed to raise a lot of money to do that because we do a lot of with our thank you very much Gilbert and Public Library Foundation and people who have confidence in us we have many benefactors who uh, you know support those kind of things but the whole idea was that to create partnerships. And then when they realized this library is not always coloring right in the lines, we got mm -hmm. a lot of people who came forward and said, hey, we would like, to, can you put on something like that? So we get a lot of ideas from community. And a lot of times you will see that we have a partner or 10 partners or 20 partners on mm -hmm. an, a, any given uh, event, like the Alabrejes, uh, the beautiful, uh, paper mache 16 foot animals that were there last fall um, so many people came through and sponsored those we had our uh, a workshop mm -hmm. a Spanish business workshop in Spanish that was really well received but as our community changes we keep changing mm -hmm. and I think that's I think it's essential for a public library to become to continue to be relevant our books are there you know mm -hmm. we have almost uh, 400,000 materials wow. But we are, we have so we are so much more, and mm -hmm. and the whole idea is really to we try and be all things to all people, and mm -hmm. we're one of the places that tries to serve people from birth to seniors, all cultures, all socioeconomic levels. This is where Elgin sees each other. Mm -hmm. You know, when we do something that's a big event, you're going to see people from everywhere, and that's what part of the, what I love is to see people. I haven't seen you in so many years <laughs> and that happens in our library space and it's a fantastic it's like a homecoming and it's not just at the downtown library space though <clears throat> pardon me the other two locations that you have have their own individual uh, programming and work within the culture of the areas that they're at so your west side library is where uh the Rako branch mm -hmm. is on uh, uh Bose Bose road, road. Mm -hmm. and uh, many people who use the Rako branch that's their home library mm -hmm. Uh, we have the South Elgin branch, which is going to go through a, uh, going to triple in space here in a few months. And, and don't, don't ask me when <laughs> this is going to happen. <laughs> this is a federal grant. And, um, it's just taking a little bit longer, a little bit than, longer than, than what we thought. And then we have a bookmobile that comes to you. We have a technomobile. Mm -hmm. We have so many things that we have created with support from our community to serve needs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, you, you, the the South Elgin branch is just the perfect example of that. So you were there. You gr you're just out of space with the number of people that are visiting mm -hmm. that location, which is in a retail mall, if you will, unusual a, for a, a library. Yes, yeah, I mean it, it just is very different from what you think of as a traditional library. And a, and a huge support from the Hoffer mm -hmm. Family Foundation. Absolutely. So we think yeah we have some really wonderful benefactors who <coughs> we recognize. 
how important our work is, and, and we thank them all the time, but what a difference so many of our major contributions uh, that people have made. To well, the philanthropy is so, so important on this. I didn't mean to step on your sentence, but philanthropy in this community is just really, uh, there's a legacy. Matt, you and Chris, our, our youngest son went to Burlington Central High School. You all are very, very generous with the high school, and I'm sure there's much more, but tell them what you do every year with the music department. Well, uh, this started many years ago when my sister was in the Central High School band. We put a uh, wagon of produce through the Burlington Parade in the fall, and then anyone can come up after the parade with buy a bag for, at the time, I think it was a dollar <laughs> when we first did it back in the uh, 80s, and fill up your bag and go home. Uh, so we've done that, and I think I, I say often that my dad kind of created a monster because every year it seems to get a little bigger, <laughs> and the wagon has to be a little bigger, a little and we bigger. have to bring extra trucks. <laughs> so, but it's it is so much fun because just to see the the excitement and and the band will play before we sell, and they'll surround our little produce wagon and play some of their songs and it's just it's overwhelming uh, so it's well worth it and we also support the uh, FFA group uh, at the school too so uh, and so our son played the trumpet at Burlington during the four years he was there and it for you it it's the same way for us as parents I mean what generosity the clients have provided to that community to the the music department to you know this going on for 40 years if you will uh, to support the folks and so uh, Denise what you have with philanthropy what we have my career with United Way the same way uh, it, this is just there's just so much generosity out there and and so many people are, are continuing to support organizations and very often you don't even know that they're doing that uh, but um, there's a lot of that going on, and I think, Dennis, as you mature through your ownership here, you mm -hmm. will see that that is a recurring theme within our communities of Elgin and South Elgin around here. Yeah, I think what ended up happening with, with the pandemic is we lost our third spaces. We lost, uh, you go to work, you go home. That's, that's what you have. During the pandemic, it, they kind of shut down. And what I really like about this rejuvena uh, rejuvenization that we've got here, even in the springtime as, as everything goes, is we're, fi we're finally starting to foster those third, fourth, fifth places as everything goes. So we've got the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. we've got the markets that we can go to, we've got the library, we've got um, listenership that we've got for WRMN. And as long as we keep focusing on that instead of our our, our, our our silos stay away from our silos and, and branch out a little bit more that's what community really is about go ahead you, you look it like really you wanted to say no, something. I was just, no. I'm taking it all in yeah and, and, so, it, uh, and isn't I, I that it I mean um, to have that community interaction hey I haven't seen you in a while well let's get more opportunities to see each other and I think you will find that is what one of my very favorite things of working in this community is everybody pulling together. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea that we can pull so many people in, um, but with a phone call, it's, it, and it's like, we're all pushing for the positives. We're all pushing for our community and it, and it works. It's a, it works like a charm here. Uh, it's, it, I, I'm not saying everything is rosy all the time, <laughs> uh, but it really is a community spirit that you don't see replicated in too many other places. That's very true. Well, and the connectivity, I think, is really important, too. So we had, as I said earlier, our annual meeting. Matt was at our annual meeting. And it was just great to have Matt and so many different people representing segments of the community that don't traditionally get together. So I don't know where Matt would have that opportunity to meet the uh, the general manager of Grand Victoria Casino, but but uh, we made sure that that, that uh, introduction was made, and maybe the casino at some point in time will want to use some of Matt's produce, who knows? But those are the kinds of connections that happen frequently uh, in this community, Denise, and, and you see it regularly. All the time, and I wanted to make sure, I'm going to jump away from the library for a second, even though there is a library part of this. Uh, Enhancing Elgin is going to mm. have an 
open Elgin Museum Crawl on May 25th. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. The library will be part of that, and then it will be the Elgin History Museum, the Observatory, the Fire Barn, and the Public Museum. Mm -hmm. So we have had an open Elgin event, which is really cool to take advantage of these fantastic architectural gems that we have here. And this one will be a museum uh, crawl. We, and we think we will have a, a trolley we're not sure that's firming up but we expect that to be a, a a great event so look for that yeah and we're really pleased this is something that through our economic development program elgin development group our enhancing elgin uh, volunteers represent so many different organizations around the community we've done enhancing elgin's um or the the uh tour for a number of years, bringing it back last year and the year before to do about 30 different locations. And we thought this time it might be fun to just refresh it and look at a sector of our community. So rather than having to choose between, do I go to here and here and here with 30 different locations, this will be four or five locations. Perhaps Fox River Valley, or Fox Trolley uh, will be, Fox River Trolley in South Elgin might be joining us this oh, year good, as well. Good. So, uh, you know, if you don't know about that place, that's something mm -hmm. every grandchild match should go down and be part of the the Easter Bunny or the Polar Express or just take the train through the the um, Forest Preserve because it's pretty unique. There there aren't many places that have that. So we're looking at a sector of museums at this point in time. And then, as Denise said, we'll be doing this in May with, uh, with our museums. And then next year, we'll probably look at another sector. So it's just a great opportunity to say, hey, Elgin, if you don't know about these kinds of resources in the community, come on down. This is free. Take your time. Go visit a couple of places and, and then go back to what you're doing in, in May. So that is, uh, I think, Memorial Day weekend that Saturday for a few hours and it'll be a fun resource for folks to to come it becomes a destination through our explore Elgin tourism so we'll be advertising it that way that people can come out and and um, it'll be in the advantage. library newsletter um, yeah right. absolutely that if you're not getting contact us and we saturate <laughs> if you're in Elgin and 80% of South Elgin, you should be getting our newsletter. Yep. And within that Elgin newsletter, your library newsletter, are a couple of pages for the city of Elgin, is it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It really was a way for the governments to share cost. We still had uh, some poundage on our uh, postage, mm -hmm. and we offered some pages to them, which they reimbursed the library for, but it is like someone, we, we're taking advantage of what we pay on postage. Mm -hmm. And that's been a great partnership. Yeah, it really is is a good way to do it. I do want to take a, a moment just to introduce you to a couple of new members that have joined our chamber recently. Uh, Byron Furge with uh, Gustafson Insurance Company has come on board. Minuteman Press, we all, I think, know Minuteman mm -hmm. Press, and, and uh, that is a, a new franchise down in South Elgin serving the greater Elgin area. The Xfinity Store by Comcast, so I don't know if you've seen that on Randall Road, but a new Xfinity Store has opened there just this week, and so rather than having to drive north or south, it's right in your backyard. So we appreciate their uh, support and look forward to a ribbon cutting that we'll be doing at the, the um, Xfinity store in a couple of weeks. We'll be at uh, Hanover Landing for a ribbon cutting today with the Ecker Center for uh, Mental Health has a new program there. So we'll be down there today celebrating that and just a lot of celebrations going on with new ownership. We were at Image 360 last week uh, down in South Elgin. They have new owners. And again, a family business like yours, it is so important. You know, Matt, this is uh, our landscape. You're part of the, the very fabric of, of the, this community with weaving, you know, now three generations of, of ownership of, of your local produce stands. Well, we appreciate that and, and your efforts. And you just listed so many things you're doing. And we appreciate those, making those connections with other businesses and your essential for that yeah, well yes. it's our pleasure so so denise we're counting down about four months to our, our first sweet corn coming in from from klein's uh, produce so we're excited Ooh, about that opportunity that he's getting great. ready to plant so i don't know i don't do you have to really wait till mid-april to start planting those corn pieces well we could probably plant a few pots in the greenhouse uh, all right, and see what, uh, <laughs> that happens but uh, all right. that would that would only be for our table i think oh, okay there you go there you go so uh the busiest time of year when, when is the busiest time for you the production out in the field now when you're planting i would say probably after the 20th of july through through the end of september would be the busiest because it that is the season where we're harvesting daily all day long so. sometimes you see the maybe you're one with their lights on 
you go by a farmer field and they've still got they're still working the field and you can see they're using headlights we use our headlights at 4 30 in the morning oh, wow. <laughs> that's, the <only>. that's dedication <laughs> we have to pick the sweet corn early while it's still cool uh to, to get the best flavor so oh, well, see, that's now when we use did our you know that, Dennis? no i didn't know that all right all. so wait you're picking from when the sweet corn from yeah. when to when usually about 4 35 o'clock in the morning till uh, about eight o'clock is about the latest we would ever harvest because that wow. the heat that time of year the the day starts to get the sun comes up the day starts to get warm and not only affects the the flavor of the corn but you can't be in the field because the you will it's very it's hot mm -hmm. basically after about eight o'clock in the morning it's hard to even walk through yeah there's the no field. breeze walking in that yeah. cornfield there's <laughs> so we're in and out of there and then we harvest other things the rest of the day so 4 30 in the all right morning. so and you're you're working until what time at night in from mid -July we might take on. a break during the day but uh we usually we try to get in by five or six o'clock but sometimes later well we appreciate you doing all of that for us and, and i will uh, every time i bite into one of those tomatoes of yours and that sweet corn i will recognize that it was just that morning that it was picked what are the hours for the markets we'll start in april 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. and then we move a little bit later when the during the May May season through fall. Okay. So then we'll be open at nine o'clock till six at the Lillian Street location and seven p.m. at the uh, Udina location, which is on Plank Road, uh, 39 W130 Plank Road, Elgin, is the official address for there that location you memorize that before you got in yeah right? there you go yeah, I, I gotta, it's, it's so new, it's so, new. so the only day we close early is sunday we close at five try to give everybody a little extra break my gosh and your website matt kleins farm market.com all right excellent so people can find you and you're a destination for fresh produce and and the gorgeous plants that you have we every year buy our all of our plants out by you uh, so keep those petunias going and and um those delicious tomatoes that we all like we sure will appreciate we're, that we're seeding the tomatoes this week are you yes. and have a wide variety of them once again oh yes all right Good. All right. Well, so Denise, let's wrap it up. We've got um, what, the next big event you said, well, today's birthday party. Today's birthday. But we're, beyond that, then in June, we're June really 8th, celebrating. And then we have been asked, thank you, City of Elgin, to be the Grand Marshal of the July 4th Parade in recognition of our 150 years of service. Oh, that's so wonderful. So that'll be fun, too. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, yeah. We'll be having little, we have giveaways. We're selling things, and we have lots of giveaways at the library. Again, we want everyone to take part and join us sure. in celebrating this momentous year uh, again it's it's the communities we're 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 just the caretakers in our time frame here but it's it's been in the community for 150 years and we want everyone to enjoy this this celebration and your website for people who are interested Gail in dot info good all right so so you have that information uh, my guess again thanks to matt klein with klein's quality produce a family farm here in uh, elgin with two locations don't hesitate to check them out beginning uh, just a, a little over a month from now denise raleigh division chief of public relations and development gail borden public library i'm carol gieske with the elgin area chamber we're just so grateful for you listening in again congratulations dennis we look forward oh. to working with you hand in hand and and making sure that um, we can meet your expectations about what you want to do and appreciate the new ownership and the new way that you're taking this station. Absolutely. I mean, we're all trying to make our third, fourth, fifth places out there. So um, anything that we can do to help. Good. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, listeners, you've been listening to WRMN 1410. That's right, Chamber Chat. You can check out Chamber Chat on our YouTube channel. You can also uh, listen live fourth Tuesday of every month, 9 a.m. right here with Carol. Uh, have a fantastic day. We'll see you later. Your hometown radio station since 1949, we are WRMN AM 1410, Elgin time, 10 o'clock.
With your AM 1410 WRMN News Flash, I'm Sean Kernan. Brought to you by Sky Rizzi. Explore proven results with Sky Rizzi. King County State's Attorney Jamie L. Mosser has reported that the election complaint hotline received five calls during the general primary election day voting. Three were related to electioneering. One was about privacy during a voter registration. And the last one dealt with a missing race due to a boundary error. In a newly announced commercial property deal, a 53,000 square foot warehouse lease has been negotiated by Lee & Associates on behalf of Bullfrog International. The luxury hot tub designer and manufacturer now expands its presence in Elgin at 1320 Gateway Drive. A child missing from South Elgin has been found safe after six years. Kayla Unbahan has been located alive at Asheville, North Carolina. Her mother, Heather Unbahan, standing accused of child abduction following a custody loss. The pair were identified by an employee of a secondhand clothing store who remembered them from a feature on Unsolved Mysteries. With your AM 1410 WRMN News Flash, I'm Sean Kernan. Get the one and done you want for your dog's monthly protection. Next Guard Plus, a Fox Honor Moxie Dectin and Pyrantal Chewable Tablets. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious beef flavored soft chew. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting a preventive. Ask your vet about Next Guard Plus Chews. Progressive asks, what do a late-night pizza craving? Pizza place. Can I get one large pepperoni pizza? A newly licensed teen delivery driver. A guaranteed delivery time or its free offer. And your front fence have in common? Uh-oh. That's my fence! They can turn your stomach upside down in under 30 minutes. I'm still getting a tip, right? Bundle your home and auto with Progressive for great savings and round-the-clock protection. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states or situations. Is it noon already? Take your lunch hour up a notch with Out to Lunch from 12 to 2 p.m. right here on WRMN 1410 a.m. Unwind with the perfect blend of soothing sounds and lighthearted conversations that'll make every bite taste better. Whether you're in office or out on the town, 